inefficient. Just use potions. Anyways, we're lying. Okay, you yeah. know, you know, dragon stuff is way too heavy. You know, it makes <laughs> sense, but I'm still mad about it. That's why you have Lydia, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, but you don't have her then when you first fight the dragon, though. Range. Just get fucking um, Sven or whatever. Is that oh, a mod? So I... No. Is that one the bard in Riverwood? Oh yeah, the the guy who lusts after Camilla and then's like, and you can cuck him and then make him watch. Yes, that guy. Perfect. He deserves it. All right, get the warrior lady in the bar, but you gotta beat her up first. That's a fucking. I know you're talking about. I can't remember her name. What's her name? God damn it. It's something with a Y. It's an E sound. East East No, no. I think you're thinking of Isolda. Who is not? Sold it. Yeah, that's who, is, not. who is not the warrior lady? She is not. Okay, she's the one who wants to be a merchant. Uh I haven't played Skyrim in so long. But I, hey, Mark, right. we're not we're not allowed to have companion uh, in your co-op to not make it easier. Makes sense. Makes sense. I think that's valid. Yeah. What's her... so? I got some barbecue tonight. I nice. ordered it at like 10, so I was like, I'd go pick it up at 5. I was like, ooh, this is a good idea. Then 5 rolled around, I was like, I'm so tired, I don't want to drive anywhere. And there was so much traffic. So many crazy drivers, I almost got hit by a lot of people. It was insane. But I decided to try out the turkey, because I haven't had the turkey before. And I got their seasonal cobbler, which is strawberry cobbler. Like I'm... strawberry rhubarb cobbler? It's just a strawberry cobbler. I don't know if there's rhubarb in it. Sounds good, regardless. I'll let you know how it is. I'm about to try it. Yeah. Turkey's good, though. Turkey's not dry, which I was afraid of. Oh, it's Uthgird. That's who it is. Uthgird, that's right. You were close. Right sound. It is sound. Mm-hmm. Eh, eh. Mm-hmm. All right, you ready to start? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you already started. Yes. About five minutes. You gotta warn me so I don't just fucking rant about barbecue for Flint. I I mean, I said we were live, so... I didn't hear you say that, so I blame you. Well, that sounds like a skill issue. I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. Skill issue. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna stuff my face with this macaroni call today. Mm. Nice. God, I wish that was me. Dude, I the whole reason I went to this place is because they have the best cornbread. Guess what they're out of? Cornbread. Cornbread. Yeah. Cornbread is. I don't like sweet cornbread because I think it's an atrocity. I don't, okay, I don't mind sweet cornbread. I prefer savory. Mm. This is like the only sweet cornbread I like. I love like their sweet cornbread is so good. Mm. You can still argue it's not you know actually cornbread, but that's neither here nor there. Well. All right. That's bread it's, made of uh, corn, yeah. isn't it? That's what they said about Chicago dish pizza. Deep dish. Anyway. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Hello. It's been a bit, but welcome back. Happy to have you all. Uh, Flint is on the chat. We'll catch Flint up guys here. I don't think he's gonna miss much. Uh, alright. So, it has been a while since we've, um, met. And... A lot has happened in the last few sessions since we, uh, last met. So, I'm gonna do a very quick recap of the last few sessions. And just kind of help everyone remember where we are. So, uh, about two weeks ago in the game, we had the return of Reese to Kordratsen, where you all managed to get the last shipment of medicine as a plague was spreading throughout the city. The shipment, however, was interrupted by two members of some cult that bore the same blood-based magic that Frost did. A dwarf named Ludo and a tiefling archer. Hello, Flint! And a tiefling archer, whose name I don't believe you actually got in-game. You capture the dwarf, uh, but the archer escapes with her pack of wicker beasts 
and a large shipment of medicine. Uh, Flint, uh, we are down in Auth tonight. He's having some audio issues. He may be joining later. He may not. We do not know. So we're just going with a slightly smaller party tonight for now. He just DM'd me that he's in bed scratching his balls. What? All right, then. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Love to hear it. Anyway. Uh, you followed the tiefling and her pack across the river to the town of Silent Cove, where you found it was being tormented by a group of cultists adorned with deer skulls. You took them out with a very intense battle that left you winded and resources spent. Is the way it be sometimes. Oh! Oh, you got a chat thing! It's cool. I was like, why is it popping up next to my name on the stream? That's cool. Anyway. Uh, you then what? followed the trail of, on the stream, uh, Flint's message up here, on the stream. Cool. Uh, Billy also learned that Penelope's home was in disarray and she was nowhere to be seen. So after clearing the town of Silent Cove, you made your way to her manor near Blood Meadow, where you found her, you found her manor full of dead cultists with oh thank you thank you ollie you found her manor full of dead cultists and penelope herself paralyzed at her desk by a strange uh where did it go where did it go yeah i can't find this image our like, dear friend mr owl you found Paralyzed by a strange wizard wearing an owl mask. Who explained to you that Penelope was, albeit unintentionally, responsible for the plague spreading throughout Kodratsen. As she was simply seeking vengeance for the death of her necromancer husband at the hand of the Winding Coil, specifically Reese, she had unintentionally been swayed to spreading infected ember cider to the city. With all this blood on her hands, both metaphorically and literally, as Frost would come to learn later, the cult now sought to sacrifice her to gather all the death energy she had collected. The wizard advised you should kill her first, as a storm approached, ready to take her to the witches that led this cult, the Blightthorn Coven. Though it was not a unanimous decision, the party did eventually decide it would be best to give her a quick clean death, though a quick clean death she did not receive as it seems some hint of malice crept up from the masked wizard. However, you did all manage to escape, as her house burned in the approaching storm. As you followed the tracks and learned that the tiefling must have fled north to Torthal Valley, to Ferngwen, where Frost was first turned by the woman known as Sersha. Hatching a plan, uh, Voss, the leader of the Winding Coil, had asked that you all uh, help the various mages in the city erect wards around, around the city to stem the spread of the plague, to try and keep it contained for now, and to also keep from too many more bad things making their way into the city itself. You went to go talk to Aruluna, who agreed to help if you would help her ail the... It, Heal the ailing mind of her adoptive grandfather, the ancient elf mage of legend, Sorik. You entered his mind and where you bore witness to the fall of the Grove of the Undying Flame, where you fought alongside the Warden and Sorik, along with a number of other individuals, including a young Deidre. You pushed the corruption back and broke Sorik out of his stupor, though he did inform you that was indeed not how the story really went, and relayed to you that the Warden put some sort of protective spell onto the wizard right before the grove disappeared into what Trixie later learned is now known as the Gravewood, within the heart of the Wildlands. Sorok soon after fell ill, the more <laughs> oppressive effects seemingly suppressed by whatever this protective spell the Warden placed on him was. His last words echoing clearly through Sorg's mind, first in, last out. Upon talking to the, uh, the kind of 
the otherworldly uh, beautiful cleric of Corlon, Inira, they explained that the Grove of the Undying Flame was used to hold back corruption from otherworldly threats, particularly the Feywild, and seemed to imply that if the Grove could be found and restored, its warden reinstated, perhaps that could help stop the plague once and for all. And so a plan was made. You would head north with the Dwarven Caravan led by Gren to the Torthal Valley to see what you could find out about this coven and Sertia. For heading west, meeting with the Wildlands warrior Deidre, who would guide you across the mountains into the Wildlands itself. See what could be done about the Grove of the Undying Flame. With some gifts from your mentors and your friends, you set out on an almost week-long journey to the valley, making a few stops along the way, particularly in the city of Overlook, spanning the fjord, where Frost and Rhys bought presents for the younger members of their party, a bouquet of flowers for Trixie, and a new bolt launcher for Billy to replace the slingshot he had given to Gren's son. Finally arriving in the city of Ferngland, you met a few interesting individuals right away. First was the quite uh, enigmatic, renowned tragedian Romano Cristallo, working on his play about the Witch King Angra with his fight against Lucas. <clears throat> working with his two players of varying skill and enthusiasm, Losh the Half-Orc and Liara the Half-Elf, they explained that they were ready to perform at the Burden Dragon, a retreat run by a local baron, a goblin by the name of Shahara Frost, who, Frost, also learned is his contact for any information he may need within the valley. Billy later met the young Lord Sebastian McKellen, who Billy atten who attempted to rob Billy, who was attempting to rob him. It was a very awkward situation, but both boys got out not unscathed, but not necessarily any poorer either. And finally, you met a group of bombastic monster hunters known as the Hill Strikers, with their lead hunter, Sean O'Connor. Gave you a contract. You could kill an evil spirit known as the Vulture, you would be rewarded, and perhaps get a chance to meet with their leader. You took the contract, disguising Frost as a sheep for some reason. <laughs> and, which, for some more reasons, worked. And you fought the Vulture, a terrifying buzzard like demon, whose strategy to pick up and drop his. Bray from high above was cut short quite literally by Trixie with an Earthbind spell. Successful, you return to the Hill Striders, head of the Vulture in hand, and met with the Guildmaster of the Hill Striders. A blue skinned individual with rain streaking down his windows, despite it being an otherwise clear day before him. Shakir still. I know that was a lot. Long story short, too long didn't read. You learned that the coven is attempting to resurrect someone known as the Witch King, and you should probably stop them. And also, the Grove of the Undying Flame maybe still exists. Long story short. Yay! Woo! Now, is there anything uh, we need clarifying on or anyone, any questions anyone has before we continue? Because I know it's been a while and I know my storytelling can be a little bit insane sometimes. Uh, um, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Radical. In that case, the four of you, three of you, as it were, the four of you, are currently sitting in the office of Shakir Stillwin. It is apparently a stormy, rainy night. I've got the sound effects going for that. That's rad. There we go. As Shakir stands there, silhouetted by lightning flashes across the window, sit behind him, 
Sean standing there in the room as well, listening intently to this conversation. Shakir asks if you folk would be interested in taking down a real monster, not one clothed in abyssal flames or infernal madness, but one clothed in flesh, a mortal, a human. See, er, Shakir puts his hand on ah, fucking hell. Doorbell ring, it's probably package, I'll get it later. Uh... Shakir puts his hands on his desk, fingers splayed out, and looks you all in the eyes one by one. There's going to be a, a noble of some sort at the Burden Dragon here in the next coming days. A man by the name of Baron Cecil Donovan. He appears to be... I don't know how exactly he's pulling this off, I'll be honest. All I know is he seems to be going after some of the more vulnerable children throughout the valley. He's offering them protection or food of some sort. And then they're gone. You can only assume he's given them to the same cult that took our dear Sean here when he was a young man. I, mean, I don't know what's happening to them, but based on what Sean's told me of his experiences, and you see Sean just kind of like, like he's brunting the the pain of this memory, but still winces a bit. Safe to assume most of them aren't coming back. So, what do you folks say we get a little vengeance going? I'm listening. Sounds good. Now, as we are a guild of monster hunters, I, of course, will be providing you some sort of a reward for going after this son of a bitch. In fact, I'll let you choose your reward. You have a monetary amount, 3,500 gold. Total, not individual. Total. Or, and he kind of tugs at, like, the long, kind of ornate-looking duster he's wearing. You can have this. This is a coat from... Some nobility down in the Yanisar Desert. It's kept me safe during some of my more rambunctious years as an adventurer. But uh, as you can see, my time as an adventurer is starting to grow short. Fear may as well give us someone who's going to use it. Sean here likes to live a life of danger and has actively refused the gift no matter how many times they're offered. Sean just kind of croaks. If you don't have to decide right now, just let you know those are the options. Now then, can you go a little more in detail what the cult entails? I mean, it is nice, but... It's protection. You get attacked. Mm -hmm. Some magical essence within the coat. It makes it hurt a little bit less. I'll ask anyone who wants to roll an Arcana check. Yes. We're all stupid! Yeah. I if only Lawrence were here. Thing. No! Nope. Okay. Ross, want to give it a shot? Fantastic. No Love idea. To see it. Why do I have the <laughs> highest one? <laughs> but I mean, if it reduces damage, oh, no. uh, yeah, already sounds good. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Like I said, you don't have to decide right now. What I'll say is this. I think this world would be better without that son of a bitch in it. So... I know there are some guilds out there that don't really like to condone the murdering of their targets. As you might have guessed from us being a monster hunter guild, we have no such qualms. However, if you find some method of disposing of him that doesn't involve spilling blood, all I care about is he stops terrorizing the valley. That's up to you. Alright. I'm still recovering from the, from the fucking bird, so... For now, I, I would like to rest. Of course, of course. You, uh... My intel indicates he'll be there for the next couple of days. You guys have a way to get in. That would be ideal. Take it to the place. isn't exactly cheap. It's a way for the rich nobles of this valley to get away from their responsibilities, such as, you know, caring for people. 
I'll be here if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, welcome to the Hill Striders. You folk have earned your spot here. Thank you. Anything else I can do for you? You're just kind of staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we leave. He kind of awkwardly offers everyone a cup of like cucumber water. I will take it. Yes. Sorry, cucumber I've just water. been, I've been reflecting on my life over the last few months. Yeah. What'd you come up with? Nah. Uh, nothing. Nothing of value. I'm going to Dan. Follow. Me too. The two of you leave, just kind of leave Reese there with his. I'm, I'm coming with. Life I'm coming with. <laughs> Do you need a hug, son? No. He probably does. I do not. Sean just kind of opens his arms as you walk out. No, no, thank you. <laughs> to yourself, I'll give great hugs. You guys may return to your inn for the night. Uh, unless there's anything else you would like to do um, in Fernglen for the night, you may all uh, rest up. Uh, when is the fighting arena again? It was in three days, right? It was It was coming up soon, yeah. Uh, you gather, if you go to... I think if you go to the, to the uh, retreat soon, it'll probably be ready by the time you get back. Fair enough. Okay. I'm now paranoid about porch pirates, so I'm gonna go get that, whatever the fuck packages will be about. Alright. Okay. Nice temp health, bro. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And by nice, I mean you rolled one lower than average, so nice. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> terrible. It was a bad roll. Womp womp. But now I. <clears throat> I have a fighter level of health. Now you die. Oh, finally. <laughs> I mean, if the codes are a reaction to reduce damage, me and risk you. Probably risk though, because I I'm, I already have enough survivability. Yeah. See, I'm wondering. It's is it not like a hunter's coat thing? Hunter's coat is for attacking. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it is. Hello. And uh, I, I am attuned to three items right now, so I, I I would have to drop something if I were to take it. Talking about the coat? Yeah. 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 Alright. Well, right. um... Far be it for me to t to stop a discussion. If you guys want to keep going, that's up to you. No. Otherwise, we were just talking because you weren't here. Mm -hmm. Fair. Mm -hmm. Fair. So, a new day rises in the Torpa Valley. Beautiful sunset rising over the mountains to the east, casting long shadows over this sleeping, waking village. You see by the tree out front, you see Romano and the two youngsters performing their play yet again. You see people throughout the city setting up uh, banners and flags of some sort, like a celebration in colors of oranges and yellows and silvers and whites and blacks. Uh, you're all awake and you may get a free uh, complimentary breakfast downstairs. A lot of fresh, fresh crops like the like berries and yogurt and all this stuff from a beautiful harvest. Sounds amazing. The next couple of months, the city is going to be eating good. But the day is yours. You guys kind of sitting down there, the crisp morning being held off by a fireplace in the in the front in the first floor of this tavern, surrounded by people getting their morning breakfast and a lot of farmers and uh, serfs getting ready to work the field for the following week. 
Actually, just for funsies, who wants to give me a nature check, let's call it? Why is, we, why is nature intelligence and not wisdom? That's <laughs> stupid. It's because you Angry. know what this leaf means. And not... Yeah. I don't and know. This, know is a, this is a low DC on this. This is a low DC. And I know from experience, I'm not going to roll. <laughs> no, roll anyway. Uh, Do it. Frost just doesn't care about this. This is... Hey. Okay. Frost doesn't care about this. Uh, so, the DC was 10. So... Oh. Yeah, um, it's the approaching of of an event known as the Harvest Moon, Ooh. which is essentially a week long, uh, what's the word, celestial event, so to speak, where the moon rises shortly after the sun goes down. This is norm. Uh, culturally, this is kind of believed to be a a time when Saluna and Pelor, the god of the moon and sun, respectively, kind of work together to ensure the mortals can get their uh, harvesting done in time. This is used to signal that, like, the last week or so of harvesting has begun. Uh, but it gives the farmers and their workers some extra moonlight by which to work and get everything uh, finished. This is usually marked by a celebration in more in the more rural parts of the world, such as Fernglen. You got that's what everyone's getting ready to celebrate. That tonight must be the first night of the week long harvest moon. It's a little fun fact, not really anything vital. Nice. World building. Hmm? I do that sometimes. How, how many times does it, how many times does this general area celebrate harvest? Um this is the end of the harvest. Uh it's a big deal that takes place takes place over a couple of months. So there's like the start of the harvest, there's like all these different milestones. This is the end of it. Okay. So this is... If you're sick of Harvest Festivals, this is the last one until next campaign where we're going to have more Harvest Festivals because that's just how I roll. Woo! Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> this is also signaling uh, not the start, but that we are now approaching uh, winter. Whoever put this music in, you made me check if I had a YouTube open and I had a fucking video essay playing or that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you would also note, Reese, no roll required for this. No. Uh, fine, make a religion roll, shit. Make no, no, please, please roll. just give it to me. Make a roll. I don't make wanna. I only have a plus three. You have to now. Uh, wait, why do you have advantage? Bro, I, I, <laughs> I'm just built there. <laughs> Take He's that roll away sure right now, young man. This. Reese. Yes. The Night of Ascension is also approaching. Oh. Which is the Raven Queen's holy day. Ooh. Basically, it's Halloween. Ooh. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. You're going to pull some Again, shit, more aren't you? Yee. You don't know. Mm. Halloween. This is Halloween. This it is, is not it's Halloween. Used, Halloween. It's used as to kind Halloween. of um, to mark the anniversary of when the Raven Queen ascended from her mortal form to godhood. Oh. That's a pretty important day. And how There's and how is it me. how is it usually celebrated? Uh, festival. The... <laughs> yeah, probably. Cole, help me. I think I think Cole is thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm totally no not looking it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people just mostly like you know wear wear like costumes and stuff. It's like it's like it's, it's, it's more like a de. Dia de la Muerta than Halloween, where it's like a celebration mm -hmm. of those who have passed. Okay. A little bit of both. They're pretty much at the same time anyway. All right. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, uh, cool. Thanks. Uh, good session, everyone. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 We made yeah. some rolls. It's well done. Yeah. Pretty good. By the. What is it? Fucking. Um, a uh, form purist, uh, function chaotic, chaotic rebel. This was a D and D session. It was by definition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, you guys have gotten your breakfast. You've gotten your long rest, uh, and you have a task. What would you like to do? Mm. Uh, right now, I think we should restock a little on supplies. 
Because I only have I only have one heat potion of healing. How many do I have? How many do you one have? One regular and one greater. But you have a greater. <laughs> I do, because I bought it. Mark! What? Uh, what? Sorry? What potions do you have? Oh, what potions? Sorry, sorry, I was distracted by something. Um, I have one normal healing potion. Yeah, we should probably buy more of that. Y yeah, sure. a little... Probably. A little tapped out. Yeah, you can... Uh, there is an herbalist, uh, probably like 15 minutes outside of town. Um, she's not gonna have as much of a, uh, of a selection as Verit did, but she does have some basic healing potions. She doesn't have greater? Roll a d20 for me, Frost, since you asked. Then I roll above 10 casually. Fuck. <laughs> we'll say she has a greater healing. I'm gonna buy three of them. <laughs> she has... Again, she has one. And I like three of them. Well, <laughs> you may buy one. <laughs> How much is it? Uh... Fuck, did I write down the price? God dang it, I'm an idiot. Uh, I can check my, my, my shopping list, hold on. <laughs> I had all these written down. 100 for a greater. 100 for a greater? Oh. And 50 for a basic. I'll give her 10 platinum coins. That's that's hundred, yeah. Okay, cool. Mark it, mark that down, and take your uh, your greater. You should be able to drag it in your, in your inventory, I believe. Yeah. All right. And uh, if anyone wants to buy some basics, they are fifty each. Um, I'll get two basic ones. Okay. I I will get one basic one. All right. And if we're done with that, let us set out for the quest. All right. Or, or, ass or assassination question mark? Oh, Jesus Christ! My fork just broke trying to cut the brisket. No. So, uh, you guys, as a reminder, getting into the Burden Dragon is without... Uh, tickets are very, very expensive. As in, based on what you heard, you guys do not think you'll be able to afford it with what you have. I mean, how expensive? Several thousand. Mm. <laughs> Copper. <laughs> 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 I'm sure that's how that works. So I'll I'll go ahead and lay this out. There are a few options. If you know someone who's going to be going there, you can try and hitch a ride. Uh, you could try sneaking in, try breaking in. Uh, use some connections that you may have made throughout the city so far. Or you can just try to raw dog it, as it were. Uh, my first thought is checking if the caravan guy we travel with, the dwarves that are going or not. Uh... Yeah, you can find Grin. Uh, they are not. They are going to continue kind of their trek across Kaeldru. Uh They, uh, yeah, we're not really, uh, don't really have a lot of favor with the richer folk. You can look down, it's like, oh, you're traveling merchants, why not just settle down? It's like, no, it's gross, you know? <laughs> I, I, can't, know. I cannot relate, but all right. <laughs> you're welcome for the payment. Um, thank you, thank you very much. I'm gonna give him a bow and, and go to the next person on my list. Not his head. Uh, they do look like they're leaving either today or tomorrow. Mm. They're getting ready to get to get going. Oh. Can I wish them? I'm gonna wish them safety and bah Bahamut's wing protection or whatever. <laughs> uh, they they bow their head. They say a quick prayer to Morden for you. Uh, what about Frost? The other one, not me. Jahara? 
Yeah. He's the guy you're trying to meet. He's at the Burden Dragon. Well, well, he, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's going to be like a, a play there. So why don't we talk to our, uh, our playwright buddy? Our, no, our, he, our... He, he's lame. <laughs> <laughs> listen, Ollie. Listen, Ollie. Sometimes you have to trek through the shit to see the heavens, man. You got to do it. We have to talk to him. Do we? Yes. <laughs> He's probably gonna make us partake in the play or some shit. And it would be funny. I want to do it. Come on, come on, let's talk to him. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, fine. <laughs> God bless. All right, so, uh, yeah, you guys, uh, or whoever wants to approaches uh, Romano performing under the great tree of the central market of this fine city. You see, he uh, he, he kind of looks up as you approach, like, "Oh uh, yes, uh, hello. What can I what can I do for you, folk? Here to watch more performances, more rehearsals, as it were." Kind of need a favor out of you. Hmm, what is that? Kind of nudges uh, Res forward. So there is uh, someone in town that we kind of need to talk to. But he's a, he's a hard man to reach, you see. And, but we knew, though, mm. for sure, he's going to be seeing your play. And what's so, the name of this individual? What, what was his name? Frost. Oh, Frost. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, you want to see Shapiro Frost? He's a very hard man to meet. You have to do something either quite monetarily valuable or quite impressive to him to get into with a meeting with him fortunately for us he is quite a history buff so i think we have a pretty good shot at getting in mm. so history. with that in mind would you be willing to help oh. us out we scratch your back you scratch ours you get us in what is it you want to help me with I, that's why I'm asking you. I don't... <laughs> I, I don't know what you need done. <laughs> oh, young man, you're... I do appreciate your attempts at, uh, you know, helping and providing aid to those. I really don't think you have anything you could offer me for my play unless it... Wait. See, his eyes kind of go wide and he looks up the script and he looks at the two on stage just kind of Standing there like they're mid scene, they just finished the scene. It's like, hey, what are we doing next? Oh god! Oh no! Stop. Oh no! It didn't stop. It's just very it's quiet. quiet. It's just very quiet. Uh, and he looks. And he's like, Ingra, his wife. You've got to be fucking kidding me! I don't have anyone to play Locus. Locus. The, the monster, the, the, whole, yes. the whole point of the... Correct, yes. Oh, it... right, right. I don't have anyone to play Locus. <laughs> well, my That's friends, it seems... That's for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> but it seems <laughs> you were offering assistance, were you not? Uh, yes, perhaps. We, we Does anyone here have any sort of theatrical experience? Um. Uh, I'm gonna point at Reese. <laughs> I I used to pretend to be sick to beg for money. I'll do it. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> but but wouldn't wouldn't Reese be better at this with uh, with, 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 my, with my my plus eight performance and plus eight persuasion? P please. <laughs> and plus eight deception. Please. please. If you need someone to play a monster, uh, I I can do it. Oh God. Um. I mean, surely there's just makeup we could use or something, right? If you. If you will take on the part of Locust for my play, I will allow you to accompany my troop to the retreat. And if we are so fortunate, I would like to escort us to the meeting with 
Mr. Frost. Sound fair? Fair? I think so. Y'all yeah. oh, fucking read me like a book. You knew exactly where this was going. Yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> that's why. I, that's why I was checking other people for us because maybe there's. A way <laughs> like I said, y'all could just raw dog it. We are thieves who are good at sneaking. This is true. Even I have a, a plus seven. Well, we'll be setting out in a number of hours. It, the retreat is in uh, is in the marshes north of town, so we'll meet up here about mid-afternoon and we'll set out. Whatever you have to do before then, get it done now and I'll see you there. Uh, wait, shouldn't there be, like, some rehearsal if we're playing Locus? There is no time. But is there at least a script? <laughs> he kind of he kind of looks at, like, the the scattered papers that he has. It's like, look, you don't have time to memorize it. I'll write it on flashcards, but it'll be fine. Right? Do, and is, do you Let at least have a summary of the role? Yes. Angra goes to fight the monster and he kills her. Uh, oh, all right. Not a very long description. You asked for a summary. What's what's the monster's motivation? To kill people. Oh. Does the monster have any family? <laughs> I assume so. It had birth be birth from somewhere. Roll a I'll say anyone who wants to may roll a history check and he will give you the help action on it. Uh, so wait, and advantage? totally good at that. One what? Person may, one person may take advantage. Okay. Never well, mind. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, okay. Good, good job, Trixie. I'm proud. Mm -hmm. Trixie, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say you kind of peeked into some of uh, uh, Lawrence's books while he wasn't looking. Or maybe you asked him for help, I don't know. Uh, just kind of picking, just kind of picking things up along the way. Lawrence, can you help with my homework? <laughs> I need help. I don't understand this part. Can <laughs> kind you of off read the this part of the book? I'm tired of it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so Romano kind of gives a very base description of Locus. She was a uh, monster in the ancient times of the Kaled, who one of the one of the most famous legends of Kaled history, one one of the few that still remains, is the story of the Witch King Ingra uh, fighting her. Uh, she was known as the Great Devourer, who consumed entire villages in one fell gulp. It's very much, um, if you want to, if you want to use some real world allegories, this is basically the story of Beowulf, and she is the mother of Grendel. Ah, I see. Or Grendel herself, during one of the news. Uh, there's a reactor, I haven't read the story in a long time. Okay. She was a very intelligent monster. Uh, one that could communicate, and one that got into the heads of her prey. Particularly, as you kind of have heard from the rehearsings of this script, she particularly compared Angra, this is off from the Nat 20, she particularly compared Angra to his kind of shit of a king father. Who Angra's whole point was, I'm going to be a better king than him, I'm going to be a better father than him, I'm going to be a better man than him. And there was a whole thing about, oh, well, you're throwing away everything to risk a fight with me, you're no better than him, you're seeking glory over duty. That sort of thing. So, uh, he will be leaving in a number of hours. Uh, if you guys have anything you want to do before then, now's the time to do it. Otherwise, we can just fast forward to getting to the retreat that night. Um, I don't think we have any other um, stops we need to make, right? I'm good. I don't think so. Yeah, I kind of did that beforehand, so. Great. It was more of a last, last shot kind of deal. Okay. Uh, now the question is, how do we handle Billy? Okay, Yober's left. <laughs> uh, he's just following us tea posing. <laughs> that sounds like something he would do. <laughs> Alright. 
We'll say we'll keep Billy on the sidelines for now. Um, but we will uh if he does jump in either tonight or next week, we will be able to just kind of slot him in without too much issue. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna split too many hairs about that. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. We fast forward to that night. You've all approached the Burden Dragon. Marching as the sun sets into the sort of marshy wetlands in the northern part of the valley. You see a massive tree sprawling above you with lights lighting the swampy moat that surrounds it. A number of wooden walkways and buildings built up around the trunk of this tree. As bugs and evening birds flitter around in the night sky, bats flowing through as the sun sets, getting ready for the nighttime hunts. As you approach, you see the first house you see is a ticket house with two kind of massive bulging forms, barely illuminated by torchlight, holding these massive looking uh, clubs. What you recognize to be ogres Ooh. that seem to be serving as guard of this place. This picture will load eventually. I believe in it. There's a lot in this map. Apologize. Oh, load. Gotta have faith, load. Mickey. Have some, no. have some goddamn faith, Mickey. No, I don't want to. It's at 98, and it has been for a while. Just gotta believe. It's gonna happen. No. Mm -hmm. you really Any minute now. The last one to get in. <laughs> I'm literally here, so I'm gonna be the last. <laughs> I'm not even a 98, bro. I'm still at 98. So, how's everyone's day? It's been, it's been pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty normal. I, uh, I did my mom's hair today. Ooh. For cut and color. Okay. Yeah. And she's supposed to start on mine tomorrow. I don't know if we'll be able to do all of it or just just half of it. Who knows? So mom's out of town right now and the dogs are now left unattended and they're now sniffing trying to get my food. Oh. Ah, nice. They're hungry. They are hungry. hungry, hungry. Oh, okay, the observer loaded in. Wow. Wow. Oh, oh. I'm at 100. Hey, there we go. Hey, guess what? What? I'm still at 98. <laughs> what a pity. <laughs> I crashed. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna be here all night. I gotta start preloading these things. Oh, wait! I'm in! Ooh! Yes! Things to fight. So, uh, you see Romano is here kind of leading your troop. I should give him a name. Hold on. Uh, covered by any... There we go. Look at that. No, it's Romano, no. Ronaldo. Alright, uh, 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 just keep going. Uh, I, I don't need to see. Peter of the mind. Let's just hope there's not a fight. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Romano kind of leads you all. Nervous laugh. <laughs> oh my god! So Romano kind of leads you all along this wooden path up past the ogres and up to this gatehouse here, where he produces from his coat a it's sort of a golden ticket to the dwarven woman at the other side of the desk. Yes, hello. It is the troop of the renowned tragedian Romano Cristalo here to perform the play for his lordship, Shahara Frost. It's like, right, uh, all right, I'll take your tickets now. Uh, and uh, you folk all, and it, nope, nope. My dear lady, they are with me. There's no need to. So, ah, wonderful. 
All right, uh, here's the deal, all you folk. Uh, we're going to need you to keep your uh, weapons here at the ticket house so we avoid any uh, disruptions within the uh, within the retreat. So oh. if you could please deposit anything you have here with me now. Okie dokie. So here's the deal. I'm not going to make you guys roleplay giving every single weapon. I'm going to assume everything is given over unless you specifically say you're trying to hide something. Could I, could I like, try and make an argument for keeping mine? Uh, you can certainly try. Uh, Frost is just putting a crowbar, a, ke a katar, a knuckles <laughs> knives, a, a fucking winter's body, an actual gun. <laughs> <laughs> just keep pulling out actual... weapons. A, a whip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, her eyes gonna go. Her eyebrows gonna go up at the whip. Uh, I'll keep. <laughs> I'll try to slide a hand and knuckles of instinctive awareness. So. Uh, go for it. Slide a hand yourself, whichever one uh, you want to use. They're the same. Ooh. All right. Very nice. Uh, uh, very nice. Excuse me, Miss Ticketmaster. Uh, I'm. Hi. I'm a little reluctant to hand over my sword here. You see, it's, it's ceremonial. So it's, not, so it's uh, not a deadly weapon? No, no, it's quite dull, actually. It's broken in half. It's a piece of shit. Hey! Exception, Chuck. This is a symbol of my faith, ass! I was trying to help with the check. <laughs> <laughs> sure, go for it. We'll roll that with advantage. Alright, yeah, sure. Maybe higher. Alright. Okay. It's like the 23. It's like... <sighs> Alright. Fully man. Thank you so much. Raven Queen bless you. Hey. Uh I here's have a qu question. Go for it. Uh can I use my mage hand uh to kind of keep my sickle stashed away? How would your mage hand help with that? Uh, well, let me double check to make sure. I guess, I guess my question is, what exactly are you trying to pull off with this? Are you trying to circumvent I... rolling like a sleight of hand roll, or? Pretty much, what I kind of imagine is like there's a table where we're supposed to put all our shit, and kind of like putting it down, putting the other ones down, and then like as I'm pulling out the other things, then my mage hand can like pick up. The moon sickle and kind of hide it behind me or kind of wiggle off with it here's what i will say mm -hmm. uh, i'm not gonna make you roll for this uh you don't get the sense she's the one you need to be worried about i bet there's cameras and shit there's ogres it's not cameras but there are two giant ogres right behind you <laughs> well yeah but also can they smell magic i, I they don't, can see I, they might be oh. <laughs> what i'm saying is you your sickle is small enough you want to try to hide it, but you're going to have to try to hide it, and it's going to be pass-fail. Could I use uh, Enlarge and Reduce on my sickle? Uh, that's got a, that, that is a verbal component. So. You're gonna be casting that in front of everyone. Oh, yeah, you true. can't really okay. hide it. I'll just hand over my sickle then. You'll be fine. You can try to do a, a good old fashioned sleight of hand check. I'm just saying. I, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't have a good chance of persuasion. Well, say, so you also don't get the sense that this is gonna be like, there, there's not like a sense of deception here. Like, you're, you assume you're gonna get your weapons back when you leave. Yeah. Like this isn't like a, oh you're never seeing these again. Uh I will I will give her the things. Okay. So everyone but Reese is now unarmed. I have my knuckles. You do have yes. Oh yeah, the um that's right. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Red. What the fuck is that noise? What does the noise sound like? 
It's like a <laughs> yeah, that, like a high pitched squeak. Oh, you know what? That's on my end. The goddamn children are outside. Oh, nice. The neighbory ones. The nerve. How dare they have fun outside in nice weather? How dare they? I mean, it's seven o'clock. Also, they Mickey, I can confirm. Yeah, Strawberry like, cobbler is pretty fun. That's like an hour and a half of sunlight I left. Bet. No, I, I don't like it. Well. Denied. Sounds like a skill issue. No! What are you denying exactly? I don't know. Anyway, lead the way, Romano. Yes, of course. Oh, uh, sure thank you, my dear madam. Um, we will be on our way. I'm trying to find good music for this, and it's all shitty. Uh, but, but. All right, whatever. If you guys want to try to find good casino music, be my guest. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Uh, all right, so Romano will lead the way over these winding paths uh, with lights casting shadows upon the sprawling trees and the kind of murky green water below. Uh, the lag! This is kind of a thick map, I do apologize. It's very beefy. Jeez, oh, those dragonflies are huge! Yeah, so I wouldn't recommend getting bitten by them. I wasn't planning to. The Elden Ring flashbacks. <laughs> I can't move! <laughs> Is it lag? I don't even know. It, it's it's lag. Jeez. It's really bad. Alright, if this gets too bad, we'll just go theater of the mind. This is not... Okay, minor spoilers, guys. This map was... This is more of in case you guys get into combat. This is not a I'm going to fuck you guys over with the combat. Look, so you, if we need you to go made the, the map. We're using the damn map. I did, actually didn't make this one. I found this one. Uh, can oh you God. move me through walls? Because I, I think I'm stuck in a wall. <laughs> Where are you? I, I, I managed to escape the goddamn building. Like, the outside of the Ross, goddamn I think you're just building. gone. <gasps> we lost the boys! <laughs> no! Here we go. I, I, I'm at the entrance. Oh, oh, you were covered by Rhyme! Oh. No, run! Oh. Jesus Christ. There we go. There we go. I'll, I'll, I'll drag you over. Oh my god. <laughs> that was almost the end for us. Yeah. Yeah, so you see uh, this ogre kind of waves his hands like, Have a good time. You do. Thank you. I work here. Uh, I hope you have a good work day. Thank you. Hey, you can open the door. It's fine. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, you approach and you see the vibrant, uh, brightly lit wooden interior of this building. You can go through the door. It's fine. You see a number of finely dressed patrons sitting at all sorts of tables, rolling dice and playing cards. You see a couple more ogres uh, milling about. Sure. Let's do. This will do. Sure. Uh, you also see a number of large, heavily armored uh, dragonborn kind of standing standing firm guard at some of the doors throughout this uh, throughout this building. Hi, Molly. Uh, feel free to... Uh, Romano's going to go in. And you see the things brought up before you. You do see the... Uh, what you imagine to be the stage right front and center of this entire establishment. Uh, the number of guards you see, uh, the you see bars uh, selling drinks and food to the patrons. Uh, very fancy. It smells rich in here. Anyone who's been to a nice restaurant knows exactly what I'm talking about. It mm. smells rich in here. Mm. Uh, yeah, you see a number of uh, kobolds in very fancy suits running around with plays balanced on their tiny little clawed fingers just skittering through offering glasses of various liquids to the patrons as they sit and talk or gamble or play games 
it, Mono is, looks at you and says, hmm? by the way, is Ryan with me? Uh, I was, that's what I was going to ask you. Do you want to bring Ryan with you? Is he allowed? <laughs> it's a service animal? I'll say sure. Pass him off as a service animal. Oh. <laughs> Keep him close. That's the ogre. Aye, aye, boss. No funny business. Work, work. Zug, <laughs> zug. <laughs> <laughs> Me, not I, an orc. I, I can't, I can't see anything. The whole thing crashed. Oh, no. Okay. We can just do Theater of the Mind. Looks like this is the Reese show. <laughs> Yay. Well, uh, before you guys go gallivanting about, <laughs> Romano kind of gathers everyone together and says, All right, well, the play is going to begin in about an hour, so take this time to explore if you wish. Uh, go do whatever work it is you're here to do. Uh, well, feel free to grab a drink, gamble, sit and talk, mingle with the locals. Uh, if rich blood is your type, uh, I will be here playing some cards and drinking my sorrows away until the play starts. You'll have fun. And he goes off. Should the director really be getting drunk right before the play? Uh, probably yeah. not. He kind of grabs a drink and wanders over to this table. People who are clearly having a private conversation. Like, hello, my friends. It's so nice to meet you. <laughs> What a character. So, you guys have free reign to explore the the grounds of the casino that are allowed. Uh, basically, you guys do what you want to do, and when you're done, we will move on to the play. Where's the door, bro? There's a lot of doors. Uh, there's one right here. Right in front of you. Or to the left oh, of you. Oh my god, I made it. So proud of you. Okay. You see, these doors down here are... Oh. Guarded by this dragonborn, are they do appear to be locked with a heavily tinted window? Uh, you can smell the faint scent of like very, very uh, expensive tobacco, just kind of wafting out under the doors, mm -hmm. under the uh, gap in the doors. Uh, you see a couple of humanoid people behind bars, serving like you know humans, half elves, sort of thing, serving drinks, and the kobolds kind of scurrying around to people. In fact, as you guys all stand there, one of the kobolds kind of scurries up to you. Uh, kind of a platter of drinks in his hand. He goes, <laughs> and he looks down. You see, there's this like gold bracelet on his wrist, and he kind of like like hit, whacks it a couple of times, <laughs> and looks back looks back up at you, uh, uh, straightening his suit. And you see, he begins to emote the same way with a sort of like fast paced gibberish language with the kobolds. But I can only describe this as similar to a bad dub. Uh, you don't uh -huh. hear any. You don't hear something until like about a half second after he starts speaking, where you see his mouth mouthing like the, the loud gibberish. What you hear is, "Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are well. We are pleased to welcome you to our fine establishment. May I please offer you a sample of some of the drinks we are offering tonight?" What a charming little fellow. Uh, yeah. Uh, my man's gonna <clears throat> have something while I'm here, right? Of course. We have three drinks on selection tonight, and you see he, his um platter has. One, one like mug of something, and two small glasses, like two flights. Mm. Uh, you see the f uh, he offers the mug first. Like we have here a sample of our finest Imba cider. Our our patron Shahera Frost is offering this as a discount, as a in honor of a fallen friend and business partner. He is offering these at a for the fine folk to taste. We also have, and he spins it around, you see the two flights. He sees a kind of fizzy pink drink. We're offering the Solara. God damn it. Kinds, of course. <laughs> and... I'll never be free. And he, the last flight is this kind of like golden kind of drink with small bubbles floating up to the top. But you notice this grass, this glass appears to be frosted as though it were cold, but you don't see any ice within the drink itself. That's and so of course, cool. Shahara Frost uh, Premier Select, Frostbud Mead. Our premier drink at this establishment. Good stuff. Can I, would you be in interested in any samples? Uh, I, I would like to try Solara. You, you cannot drink. 
He I don't he know. hands he hands Trixie a flight. No. Oh, yes. No, I'm, I, I'm not. I'm I, not even. I'm not even sure she's allowed in the casino. Yeah, I, this is highly unorthodox. Um. I will very slowly sip at the drink. I, I guess if it's that little amount, it shouldn't hurt. Um, it is very, very sweet. Trixie, if you knew oh. what alcohol tastes like, you wouldn't taste it. Oh, this is nice. Oh, no. <laughs> it's oh, very no. strongly oh, no. flavored of, like, strawberries and... Uh, oh. It's very, very powerful, fruity, very uplifting, very light. Uh, could you I make sure she doesn't... Like... C could you make sure she doesn't get any more of those, please? Are you talking to the kobold? Yeah. It, forgive me, my lord, is this... is this little girl your daughter? Yes! Oh! Please! Very well, of course. At the request of oh. the parent or guardian, I will not offer this little girl any more drinks. Thank you. I, Does that I appreciate mean that it. I get to start calling you dad? <laughs> and for the two esteemed gentlemen, would you prefer any type of drink? Um, <laughs> I'll have the, uh, the the amber. Keep in mind again. This is a kobold shittering away, standing on a table, so he's at height with all of you. Oh, perfect. I, I love that. I usually hate the taste of mead, but I'm willing to try it. Of course. Here you go, sir. Uh, it is very. It's very um almost minty it's but very strong like berry flavor mm. uh very strong honey flavor uh you kind of you have a little bit of condensation on your breath as you kind of take a sip of it it's very refreshing it very wakes you up my opinion on mead, <clears throat> on mead remains the same this day very well and for you sir would you like a drink uh the first one you mentioned the amber the Ember Cider, of course. And he hands you the full mug of Ember Cider. Mm. So, you said this was dedicated to a friend of his, right? Yes, the late Lady Penelope Quinn has met an unfortunate end recently. This was her select. Ah. You see, the two are all often regarded as sort of friendly rivals, but their business partnership always remained friendly and respectable. Oh, Reese will take a very casual sip. I see. Uh, it's uh, for, for, very it's, unfortunate. I heard about uh, that. Uh, uh, Frost is just kind of looking at the rest. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, it's very fall flavor. It's cinnamon. It's apple. It's. It's basically apple cider with like a little <laughs> bit of. It's like apple cider with fireball. Mm. Oh fuck! That sounds pretty good actually. Yeah. But, it but, is good. Mm. I posted how Frost is looking at the rest of the tree. <laughs> 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 This is, uh, this is very good. Hey, Reese, roll a con save. See, I'm good at those. Are you? Yes, I'm, I'm a sorcerer. Yeah, you baby. <laughs> uh, you are pretty confident this is not tainted. This is not uh, whatever sickness was in it down a blood metal. You, you are fairly confident. No, you are confident. There, It is not in here. Fantastic. This is safe. This stuff is safe. Hey, uh... Got any meat around or, or anything to eat, or is it just drinks? Yes, of course. If you want to go to one of the bars, they'll be happy to provide you with refreshments of any sort. We are only offering samples of the drinks at the moment. Actually, wait a minute. Uh, wait a fucking minute. He uh, kind of scurries <laughs> off, and a different kobold comes back up with a plate full of hors d'oeuvres. Like, yes, of course. I was told you were looking for samples of food. He's got like some mini quiches and like, uh, and like uh, some. Fucking like catfish wrapped in uh, bacon. Mm. Mm. I I I want it a, a quiche. It's 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 good. It's just a little too greasy. Mm. Yeah, I, I like in one of the other ones. Uh, Frost kind of grabs the catfish and kind of looks at it. I don't fully understand the point of the of this presentation, but. Gives it to Ryan. <laughs> uh, Ryan <laughs> scarfs it down. Uh, yeah, Trixie, you get some. It's, uh, again, a little greasy, but actually well seasoned. The catfish is very well seasoned. Bacon's just kind of bacon. Yeah. 
See, I'm just imagining that dog eating a bean burrito in one second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, would you would you know how to explain the games we have around here? Oh well, yes, of course. We have uh, two games we're offering tonight. And he kind of gestures over to the table over here. He said, "This is our card game of the evening. We're offering Dressonian Gambit. Essentially, the dealer okay. will put down a couple of cards, and then everyone else draws a card, and you're trying to get a certain uh, pairing of sorts. The dealer will have a list of all the pairings required. And over there at our dice table, we are playing Avandra's Favor. Simply a roll of dice. Uh, you're trying to reach uh, one of two particular numbers. It is entirely luck-based. You either hit it or you don't. Are they free games? No, unfortunately, here at the Bird and Dragon, we do have an expectation of monetary buy-ins. Uh, if you win, of course, you do get your money back and then some, based on how many people have offered to donate to the pot, as it were. All right. Never, no, never tried this gambling thing, but I, I, I'm sure it's a quick way to make money. I guess I can make up for lost time in Dunbras. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck in 98! It's okay, Trixie, you'll get there eventually, I promise. Uh, well, as you approach these two tables, uh, you do notice um, this. this this guy. <laughs> this you bastard. see uh, an individual um, with kind of like these strange tufts of hair pointing out, and he's kind of... Uh, you see, he's kind of just kind of... He's playing cards at the moment with this gentleman sitting next to him, but you notice his eyes are firmly locked on this door down here. Oh, the the cat dude. We finally What's found it? him. I I want I wanted to talk to the cat dude. All right. Well, uh, we'll, go, door, we'll go in order. Uh, Frost, you wanted to gamble. Yeah, I I, I want to play the the table I approach. Okay, uh, that is Avandra's favor. Uh, you approach and you see uh, a well-dressed man kind of passing out, uh, passing out dice. Says, "Hello, uh, welcome to Avondra's favor. What can, what are you offering as uh, as bet for today? Essentially, whatever you offer." She uh, pulled the fucking rolls. No, it's a festival session. No. an auction festival session. Okay. Let's see if this works. Um, boom. Can you all see that? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Very, basically, roll. It's, it's very simple. Whatever you wish to offer as, whatever you wish to offer as part of the pot, uh, you may either lose it or you may get it back. So it's dice, dice blackjack, basically. I guess, yeah. Yeah. What's the minimum buy-in? Yeah, it is, it is kind of. <clears throat> A minimum buy-in for the night is fifteen gold, but you may go higher if you wish. Hmm. All right. I don't risk it. Uh, what, what's the point? I, yeah. I put I put down ten platinum. Whoa! Oh. All right, I'll I'll put down twenty gold. Oh, right. Come on, right? I am not right. super liquid right now. <laughs> I gotta start writing down everyone's bets. Jesus, hold on, hold on. Okay, so, uh, Frost, you're putting down 10 platinum. Yeah. And Reese, 20 gold. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, all right, we'll take the half orc gentleman first. And he kind of scoops up the 10 platinum coins and hands you two kind of worn, kind of, but still, you know, sturdy uh, wooden dice. Says, Be my guest, good sir. 
Can I do a quick check to see if he's loaded or something? Yeah, make an investigation check. Lucky the draw, man. Lucky the roll, as it were. I, I, what do I roll? I uh, roll 2d6. You're trying to have the total be either a 7 or a 12. No, uh, I rolled a 1 out of 5. Okay. Hmm. What is 5? So, that is unfortunate, but uh, I can either call this here now, or you may place another 10 platinum down, try to double the bets, and you may roll one more die. If you win the bet, then you get double your reward back. Sure, why not? Put another 10 platinum down? Yeah. Okay, roll one more d6. You have a 5, so you need either a 2 or... Uh, a 2? That's all a you can five. do. 2 or a 5. Wait, no, hold on. No, he, he, yeah, no, he, need a, he needs a 2. I might, yeah. You have to roll a 2. Ooh. Ooh, that is terrible luck, so I'm so sorry. And he takes the 20 platinum total. Hmm. All right, Riz, go for it. All right. My good sir, please roll these two dice. Okay. Mmm, damn. A three. Would you like to try again and double your bets? Well, yeah, why not? He takes another 20 gold from you. You need a four. Damn it. Terribly sorry, sir. But thank you so much for playing. Would you gentlemen like to play again? I'm good. What about you? Uh, I want to see some round, of the... try your luck yet again. I want to see some of the other games, if you don't mind, sir. Huh, I don't mind at all. We're just happy to have you here. Hope you gentlemen enjoy your night. He's still sipping at his drink. He's very conflicted at how good it is. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, you do notice the only drink they're offering samples of in full sizes. Hmm. Interesting. Awful. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised you, you you like that shit. Sometimes so am I. I'm not, not really too big on the sugary stuff. If you, if you can't feel the alcohol, what's the point? I mean, it's certainly there. It's more obvious than the Solara. I've drank it before. Uh, you approach the Dressonian Gambit table? Yes. Uh, you see the same... Uh, they're finishing up a hand right now. Uh, the, uh, the, the guy with the strange hair kind of puts his cards down. Uh, not really paying attention to what he put down. He knows, a, for those of you who know the game, a terrible hand. And the goal says, oh, wait, a reward to the gentleman on the left. Thank you both. Would you like to play again? We're starting a, a new hand with uh, you folk lingering over by the tables. Would you like to join? Yeah, I'll join in. Right. Sure, why not? I want to watch. All right. Uh, you may gather around the table, uh, whoever wishes to participate. Uh, could you pull up the rules for it again, if you'd be so kind? I, I can't find I the, uh, the yeah. sheet. <laughs> Thank you. So I'll, I'll start us off by rolling the cards. That will be the... Um, I can never... The pot. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I wrote down rules for a reason, because I can't remember shit. Remembler. 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 Uh, why does my thing keep crashing? <laughs> Shit. Alright. Uh, Frost, will you be joining as well? Sure, why not? Alright. Walk up to the table. Alright, so we have the t 
four gentlemen here. You see the man with the strange hair and a noble, kind of like a, a dwarven man with a very kind of uh, robust red and gold robe, a uh, thick braided beard. Like, yeah, let's go again. Very clearly drunk. Mm, fantastic. Easy pickings. <laughs> All right, and you see the man in the tuxedo grabs the cards, uh, shuffles, 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 shuffle them, and will place two cards down. It's six and a five. Right. Everyone, those are the the pot for this hand. Let us start from left to right. Uh, we are going to start the minimum buy-in at 15 gold each. Um, and he starts going around. Uh, the dwarf... I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna write this down so you can keep track of it. Uh, the dwarf and the uh, man put in fifteen gold each, and he looks to Frost. Uh, my dear sir, would you like to meet, raise, or fold? I call. Right. Uh. I, I can't remember poker terms. I'm so sorry. Uh, call is 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 meat. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it should have been. Uh, cool. And you, looking to Reese. Uh, call. All right. And let's go in order then. Uh, I'm gonna start with the dwarf. Ooh, a two. Then the other guy, a three. Uh, Frost, roll a d12. Am I just seeing the card, or, or am I, or am I showing it to everyone? That's a good point. You know what? Fuck you guys. No. <laughs> uh, you may roll. Uh, I, uh GM roll, you, I guess. You can, you can choose, you can choose to roll privately or not. That's up to you. But I want to see it, so. Okay. And Reese. All right. Okay. That is round one. Uh, we will now go back to the dwarf. Uh, the dwarf is going to call. Uh, the other man is also going to... Okay. Uh, Frost. Hmm. Guess I'll call. Okay. Uh, go and roll. Okay. And Reese. Call. Okay. Hmm. Okay. And one last round. Uh, the dwarf is going to call. Wow. I'm not going to say what the wow was. I was going to say a lot of people are rolling the same number right now. Wow. Mm. Uh, this man is going to. He's going to raise. He's going to put. He's going to put down twenty gold. Not one twenty. I'm gonna fold. Okay. Uh, Reese. Mm. Now I'm gonna fold too. Okay. Uh, the dwarf is going to fall to 20. Alright. And the winner for this round is going to be, and everyone put their cards down. I'll, I'll go. And, I'll go and put down what everyone had. Uh, the dwarf had. I'm gonna start with the pot. 
This was the dwarf. This was the man with the weird hair. This is Frost. This is Reese. Mm. Bro, we were the only ones who had some. <laughs> and you guys folded. No, the the, uh, pot, the hair man had a pair, too. Oh, he had a lower pair than you. Oh, right. He had pairs of six. Damn. He had a pair of five. Oh, well. So that is... 70 gold to him. <clears throat> and he, he, he kind of takes the gold and just kind of half-heartedly plugging into his pocket. Like, would anyone like to play again? I'm good. I'll give it another go. Is that one guy still watching the door? Yes, he is. Uh, I'm standing at the end of the table. I'm gonna turn towards him. Why do you keep looking at the door? What? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, ma'am. Everything is fine. You've been watching the door. I would ask you to please mind your own business, little girl. Is there someone outside of the door that's been watching in the window to tell you what they are? What the cards are? He doesn't really react, but you see the man behind the table visibly tenses up and looks back. It's like, so is there something you'd like to tell us? It's like, what? <laughs> no, no, obviously, I, I'm obviously not cheating. I've been here on... I mean, so. you could have been here all night and still had someone out there all, all night, too. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Let me see. He looks like he, he's not going to swear, little girl, but he just kind of gets up and angrily. <sighs> kind of goes Wait, over to this table and So is there down. really someone outside? Make an insight check. Wait. Will it? <laughs> oh my god. Nice. Very nice. That was not the look of a man who was angry that he got cheating. He got caught cheating. He seemed genuinely surprised at the accusation. Like he wasn't even paying attention to everything going on. And suddenly he's being asked to leave. It was more bewilderment than anything else. Huh. So you do not think he was cheating. Well, he's out of the game. Uh, so it will just be Reese and the Dwarf Man. No. Oh. You guys have better luck now. Go, 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 go. Do it, I guess. I'm going start, uh... start the uh, pot again at 15 gold each. I'll put 15 down. And Frost, you're out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Mark, you can go and roll this publicly. All right. Uh, the dwarf is gonna go. F oh, okay, that's fine. Oh shit, sorry. I, I apologize. That's, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's all good. Okay. Dwarf is gonna raise. All right. He's gonna raise it. Th he's gonna raise to. Uh. He's gonna raise a twenty again. And he's gonna roll again. So is that an extra five? Or an extra uh, twenty? Yes. Okay. So it, it's now 20 gold instead of 15. Okay, all right, that's that's what I thought. Okay. Uh, do you call? I'm calling. Okay, go ahead and roll. Uh, I, I did. The, the D10. This is round two. Roll, this is round oh, two. Roll oh, two. shit. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. Uh, round three, he's going to call. Bro, you ain't got shit. Yeah, I'm kind of fucked. <laughs> Raise. Okay. I don't know uh, what, what the point is <laughs> trying to bluff the DM, but... You're not bluffing me. <laughs> what are you raising? Uh... Another 20. 20 right now. Another so 20. total? Yeah. Okay. Can you make a deception Damn. check? I was, I'm gonna... I only say roll deception or intimidation. Mm, let's see what am I good at. Good 
Oh, I'm good at deception. I'll do that. I've got a shit eating grin. No, there is there is no way he he is a com he, he's not a commoner, but he has the stats of a commoner. He has a plus zero. He's not gonna beat that. Mm. Uh, he fucking folds. Thank you kindly, sir. Which I'm going to uh, go ahead and roll a d12 one, one more time just to be sure. Just just to be sure. Eight. So you had oh that's that was almost good. Almost so you had a yeah. ten. A 10, a 9, a 8, a 5, and a 3. Not almost good. It's not good. Yeah. I'm going to write down what he had. Right? I'm just going to tell you what he had. 10, 3, 5, 5, 5. Mm. Three of a kind. I oh, had my goose You fucking intimidated him. He folded. You intimidated him into folding. You win. I am the winner. Uh. Uh. Is it doubled or is it just all the money? It's just all the money gets put back in. So you yeah. get, you get sixty gold. Very cool. Hey. I'm leaving with the dwarf more is, than I came in with. The dwarf is angry that he was deceived so much. But you can't have respect it. I'll knock on the table. Good game, fella. I think that's all for tonight. Hey, keep it going, men. And he sees he's now the only player left at the table. Uh, uh, <laughs> which door was the dude looking at? <laughs> Uh, the one the dragonborn is standing next to. Uh, oh, this one. Okay. Oh, that's a door? This one right here. here. That's a window. This is the door. Oh. Ah, yes. Hey, hey Res. Hmm? C care to distract him um, uh, for me to check out what's in there? Uh, let's see. How can I do that? Like, talking, maybe? Yeah, I know. I know. But like, oh, what's, what's, what's my, what's my <laughs> prompt? <laughs> I know, I'm trying to think of how to talk to him! Okay, while you, while you figure that out, I'm gonna grab my jacket, it's getting cold. Okay. Or maybe you have better stealth than me. Um, I, have a, I have a plus three. Oh, I've got a plus seven. Problems that you're also better at distracting than I am. Yeah. <laughs> What's your stealth yes. tricks? <laughs> you wanna share with the class? What's so uh, funny? Nope. Oh. Uh. You said stealth? Yeah. Uh, plus seven. I'm back. Then maybe you two, you two should do it <laughs> instead of me. Uh, probably. Do you think you can cause a distraction? No, uh, when a uh, race causes a distraction, you use the can. Ah, shit. Like, not necessarily enter, just open the door and peek. You, I don't, there's no need to risk that much. Uh, sure. Yeah. I, I could, I could mm. do that. I do have Pass Without a Trace if I need it. I don't think you're going to be able to cast that without calling attention. Probably yeah. Probably not. Yeah, no, that, that's it. That's all I got. All right, all right, Riz. How about this? Someone just got caught cheating in the table. That, that is true. I think I've got something actually. Oh, okay. Maybe. I'm is gonna there tell anything him. I can help with, or or am I just standing here? There's something in the swamp. I saw it. You saw those monsters down south, right? What if they're here? We have to be sure, don't we? Right. Is that a good excuse? They'd want to, you know, calm the nerves of a. Terrified party goer, wouldn't they? Okay, so true. Yes. Uh. Right. Sure. Go for it. All right. If you'll excuse me. It's a door up here somewhere, right? The wrong door. Is the door? No, no. I'm, 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 I'm creating an alibi. Okay. Ah. Uh... Just casually. Yeah. Yeah. I'm stuck. I'm st like, uh. okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're all dying. Uh, no, I'm in the water. All right, you die. No. Well, there's a lot uh, of yeah, there's a lot right. of bodies down here. Holy shit. <laughs> Maybe I should tell him uh, about that. <laughs> uh, as you're walking, you see, uh... yeah, there's a fucking body out here. What the fuck? You just see these two lovely people enjoying a night, nice night, kind of just sipping 
uh, sipping ember cider in the evening breeze. You kind of walk around a bit. Yeah, you've now done gonna, a half circuit around the casino. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean over the railing. I'm gonna yeah. look down. I'm gonna see the fucking body. <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna, these, yeah, I'm gonna burst through. Guard, guard. Uh, whoa. There's been a murder. Mm -hmm. whoa. There's a there's... body out there. Well, if there's a murder, I would have heard about it. Where? Uh, follow me. Make a deception check. Is it a deception if it's true? <laughs> the I mean... nature of this is deceptive. The yeah, I don't know if this is a murder or not. <laughs> Come on. Hmm. Oh, that was a uh, hidden. My bad. All right. Oh shit! All right, lead the way. It's it's over here. There it is. <sighs> he just kind of he just kind of groans and pinches his cheek or his uh his nose. It's like, uh, oh, that's not that that's. He kind of blushes a little bit. That that's not a person. What? And meanwhile, <laughs> <laughs> this will not be elaborated. It's a mannequin. Oh, I don't have to explain myself to you, Miss <laughs> Mister Frost. He he. For a dragonborn, you've never seen a dragonborn blush. Yeah, I didn't like, know that was possible. I don't, get paid, I don't get paid enough to talk about this shit. Meanwhile. Uh, Trixie, the door, <laughs> you, you go up to the door and kind of try the handle. It is locked. Uh, what about the next, the one over on the other side? The two doors are both locked. You have a lockpick. I will. That was that was my second question, sir. Uh, may I pick the lock? Uh, you may. <gasps> yeah, I'll try that first. Yeah. yeah. So. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh -huh. Use dexterity, please. Dexterity, goof, twelve. Uh, twelve is not enough. Uh, can, can can I see her uh, her her fail and then try it myself really, really, really quickly? I say you would not. Uh, you may try to. Uh, here goes Reese. Make me a performance check. Let's see how long you can keep this guard on. Okay. All right. All right. Come on. Come or, on. Or you, you know, use whatever charisma skill you want to use. I mean, I'm I'm okay. proficient for performance, so. Okay. Mm, okay. Not great. I'll say I'll say you have two more actions to do something. All right. Do you want me to try? Uh, you can try. Or I was thinking I might be able to just like wild shape into like an ant or something and crawl under the door. Yeah, that works. But also that uses one of my two wild shapes. It's fine. Alright, well I will I will transform into should I do an ant or something slightly bigger? How big is the crack? Um it's pretty low to the ground. Uh, you don't you don't think like a like a rat or something could crawl through? Like it seems like specifically designed to prevent pests. There's not much that can keep an ant out though. Okay. What about like a small mouse? Um, that's gonna be a tight fit. Okay, I will transform into an ant. Okay. And crawl under the door crack. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see what we can do about that. Type an ant. Did you mean cloud giant? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I see there's actually something I can give you. Um, actually, as a tiny creature, you should be level eleven to do that. Oh really? Not one D. No. That's one D. <laughs> <laughs> That's one D. <laughs> oh. You scared uh, me. Okay, whatever. Yeah, we'll say you are now an ant. You don't need to actually have a visual for it. Uh, yeah, you may. I will not unlock the door for this, but I will slide you in. Thank you. Uh, you see, the first thing that kind of overcomes you is this scent of very heavy smoke 
a very fragrant, very floral, very fancy kind of um, uh, kind of scent. Uh, you see a number of individuals uh, kind of talking over big bags of money and strange things. You can't really see from down here, but there's like weird smells. There's there's weird stuff going on in this room. And at this table at the front, you see a you're you're an ant. You can't really see what's going on, but you do see a very lavishly dressed man in this kind of gold and blue armor with a kind of very thick mustache. You can see him right there. Uh, you see, see I'll show everyone. Oh, Baron's. You don't. We wouldn't know who this is. But... Oh. We don't recognize them. Very fancy though. What do you do? Uh... Maybe I'm gonna, like, shrink my way around the outside. Okay. And then get to, like, this corner and see if I can overhear the, t the conversation at this table. Sure. Uh, meanwhile... Look, we don't get paid enough to ask these questions, alright? Just enjoy your stay here, sir. Good day. Good evening. Just, just. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you go over, you see this man talking with another uh, noble, just kind of like, yes, of course I do have another delivery being prepared. It'll be delivered to the Kiasta Hills soon. And I trust you have my payment for such a thing. And you see him kind of move something on the table. Uh, the sound of wood clacking against wood. And the man, the uh, person he's playing with is like, Yes, yes, of course. A um, fine matron will be sure to award you with your payment soon enough. You only need to be patient for a more days. Which response? I've been patient for a number of days already. If this deal is not to be honored, then I may... What is a businessman without his payment, hmm? Which the other man kind of just... If you wish to withhold your end of the bargain, you're more than welcome to. I cannot assure that our matron will take it kindly if you do that. But I suppose you know the risk than anyone, don't you, Bear? That's kind of the gist of what you hear. I'm gonna make my way back around, uh, and then are these people saying anything uh, necessarily like important? They're just kind of talking, having like a, uh, drinks and cigars in this kind of dark room, talking about like you know trade deals and taxes and uh, raising money and. You know what they're going to charge for certain so on and so forth this year. Okay, boring things. Nothing that strikes yet. Yeah, nothing that strikes you as important. You know. Yoop. And Slide you back out. Yoop. Oh, there you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The guard is just kind of just kind of muttering to himself. Doesn't really notice you. And I'm going to crawl my way. Oh God, what's happening? I'm gonna crawl my way over to to. Rust, I guess, Actually, make me a. Uh, yeah. Make you a. Go ahead. Okay. We'll come back to it in a second. Go ahead. You know what would be a better idea? Okay, hold on. I want to. Badoop. I want to crawl under this door okay. and go outside. Uh, in that case, make me, make me a uh, perception or a, 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 a make a stealth check then, using the stats and ant. Yeah. Would I get advantage because I'm really tiny and no one can see me? In this instance, no. Okay. I think uh, you would add a plus one to this. 
I don't think they're actually at the stat for Nance. I'm just going to say you get a plus one. In Pathfinder, you would get something out of it, but not, not in fighting. So just roll a d20 plus one. Okay. Six. Okay. Oh, the cat boy. Uh, going to just kind of come. Maybe I'll come back this way. Like here-ish. Yeah, I'm gonna go here-ish and then transform back. Okay. And then I'm just gonna uh, well, kind of sit out here for a while. Yeah. Sure thing. Uh, is anyone is uh, anyone else doing anything in the meantime? I'm vibing. All right. Uh, Trixie, you kind of sit out there vibing. You hear footsteps approaching. Oh, hi, cat boy. Find anything interesting in there? Uh, in the swamp? No, it's just kind of dirty and gross. Dude, look at that water. It's so gunky. What is your purpose for being here? I don't remember. I, my friends just said that they wanted me to come with them, and I don't really have anywhere else to go right now, so this is. I just came with them. Make a deception check. Sure. Actually, uh. Just let me think about this. I think. Yeah, make a. Make a deception check, yeah. Privately rolled some dice, man. Yeah, I forgot to do my Woe Cosmic Omen. Okay. Or, what, I, uh, did I get Woe Cosmic? Uh, is that what that one is? Yes, Woe. I got Woe again. Here, okay. Make your deception check. Deception. was I hope you understand this is a very important matter to me and I understand that you're here with those two gentlemen in the casino yep I would prefer you be up front with me hey pal uh, Frost a uh, uh, giga chat approaching <laughs> this yes. cat guy won't leave me alone He's being weird. Could you leave the child alone? All I want to know is what the group of you are doing here tonight. And why you feel it's so important to snoop around that locked room. I don't know. Well, why are you looking at it so much? It's none of your business. Then, then neither our business is yours. Come on, Trix. I I would really recommend not trying anything funny tonight, friends. Is it Cecil you're after? Who's that? Not Just to go just don't go near the child again. I won't be as nice next time. Look. I know... I know that there are eyes on him tonight. At all times. He kind of puts his hands up. I apologize for being... brash. But you have to understand my concern for him. If you are here looking for him, I plead you... I plead you to tell me so we can work out some sort of compromise. Do you know what he's talking about, Frost? We have no business with him. That what, what you just saw was sheer curiosity. Born born out of you, so you should be more careful. I'm 
Make a deception check. Minus charisma, let's go! Ah, I made it. Nope, it's loading. Your browser does not currently support it? Okay, apparently my browser that I was just using now just magically doesn't support, um... The, the roll 20, or not roll 20, uh, Foundry. Foundry. Damn. If you want to just, theater, just close your eyes and imagine, that's fine too. Okie doke. You just oh, kind of... No. Alright. Well then I apologize for the misunderstanding. I hope you folk have a lovely night. If, Thank uh, you. if you do hear anything, I'll reward you handsomely if you can give me any information. Noted. He just kind of turns and puts kind of a hand over his face and he kind of lets out a shaky breath of okay. He seems very nervous. Yes, he does. But uh, he is leaving you guys alone. All according to plan. Mwahahaha. Right. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to do before the performance? I don't think so. I'm good. Then uh, I'm going to say let's take a short break, and when we come back, we will start the performance. Cool. Ooh. Fair
Jo. Vilkom. doing okay. Miss him. Hello? Hello. 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 Hi. Good talk? Yeah. GG. GG. Yeah, I want to see the mobility Rogue has right now in the game. Sure. Sure. Am I streaming? I don't even know. There we go. Yeah, yeah, you're streaming. Watch stream. Yeah, that's so pretty. I double jump? Backflip? Dang. <laughs> I can Jesus. jump and backflip it back oh in there. God, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I've returned. Hello. Hi. I got grapes and strawberries. British white nice. dude. Come. <laughs> <laughs> got a red golden right off the bat. Oh, simply the nug I have. <laughs> oh. Oh guys, she means I'm gonna die. That's fine. Oh, I'm gonna die fighting then at least. Backflipping into Door a wall. stuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Alright. Back to the game. Cool. Uh, Alright. We return to the Burden Dragon. Uh, you guys have just had your confrontation with the uh, man with the cat like hair. Yeah. And the play is about to begin. So, uh, Romano comes up to the group of you as you kind of walk back in and is looking for. Uh... Oh, off made a breakthrough? Uh... Right, we'll keep going, but if off comes in, we'll. 
get him caught up. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Romano kind of comes up to the group of you, particularly to Frost. Like, all right, you're about to start the performance. Are you ready to go? Mm -hmm. Chris, are you doing it or me doing it? I thought I was not? doing it. I mean, if you Prince want to. Prince is doing it. I just Frost, seemed, Frost seemed very interested in doing it earlier. I just want to make sure, you know. Did he? Whoever's doing it is fine. We just, I don't care who does it. I just need someone to do it. I just figured I would do a better job, but it's fine. Got... Is doing it. I have glowing, fiery eyes. I'll be fine. Very well. All right. Here's everything you need to know. Uh, Locus only has three lines in the play. It's sort of a, a, a verbal sparring between her and uh, her and the Witch King. All right. So. All right. All right. Just, I have flashcards. I'm going to just suddenly flash them to you as you're on stage. Just read them in the. Try to sound dramatic, all right? Everyone's going to be here. Mr. Frost is going to be watching. Um, hey, just so Red. you know. Hmm? How about you sign it? How about you sound intimidating? Are you good at that? Pretty good at it. Here. I give him one bolstering cigar. Mm. I will uh, guide him, give him guidance. Okay. okay. That's it. You smoke that really quickly. It's going to make you a little yes, more trying. Yeah. Gonna go outside and smoke it as quickly as he can. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like Tom and Jerry suck the entire <laughs> cigar. <out. laughs> Romano is a dragonborn and is genuinely impressed at what he just saw. <laughs> I have team link. I have fire Damn. resistance. I can do this. <laughs> there you go. There, there it is. <laughs> You kind of got like a little bit of ash, like stuck in the corner of your mouth. Still hurts like hell. Ugh. Yeah. My lungs. Ugh. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Jeez. Oh my god, it's, it's like it's as if your voice dropped two octave and is now forced with gravel. Good lord. All right. Uh. Anyway, so, <laughs> just so you know, uh, just be, I don't want this to catch you off guard. All of Locus's lines are, in fact. Uh, rhymes. Oh, so, rhyming. Gotcha. Just you try, try to give it some kind of, you know, some kind of rhythm leading into one rhyme and the next. I, yes? I, 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 I understand. Okay. <laughs> Gods. All right, let's go. And he goes up to the stage. Or he goes next to the stage. Um. And as you guys kind of get ready, you see a bunch of the patrons start gathering around. Uh, some just kind of watch from their tables. It's an open stage, so you can kind of see from all angles of it. And you kind of hear a bit of a commotion. You hear, you see, or you hear that these two uh, guards of your kind of slam their axes into the ground as you hear footsteps approach from on high. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm slapping Molly. No, that was perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. footsteps. Fuck you, then, Mark. Jeez. Oh, um, I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you see a small... Um, you see a small green form, a bit portly, stretching out of the suit he's wearing with a uh, pipe, or excuse me, a cigar, uh, kind of just trailing out his mouth loosely. You see the man you all recognize to be, or soon to be, Shahara Frost. There he is, ah. the man of the hour. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> Continue. Yeah. And he is uh, escorted by his elite guard. To we'll say this, he got his private table over here. Kind of sits, just kind of smoking a cigar, sipping on a. Notice he only, only drinks his frost bud mead. Hmm. That is all you see. Just like the frosted glasses or uh, mugs on his uh, table. Right. Reese, I think I can't thank you enough for doing this. Uh, break a leg out there. Don't worry about it. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> the cigar, play begins. This guy's serious shit. <laughs> um, I don't know what it is yeah. about you changing your character's accent that I just can't handle. <laughs> Well, gee, Frixie. No, no, please. 
Right. Not again. Uh, so, uh, the play begins with Losh and Liara getting on stage, having their the first couple of acts are dedicated mostly to them, uh, talking about uh, Angra. Uh, his father is still the king of their tribe of the Kaelds, uh, worshippers of uh, Uthra. And talks about how Angra will be king someday. And, uh, Li and Liara playing his unnamed wife uh, is, you know, concerned that Angra is so lost in his obsession with glory and valor that he's going to lose lose sight of protecting little folk like he promised he would, like his father did before him. Uh, it's very much a more of a marriage drama with like bits of historical almost references is the nice way I can say it kind of thrown in. Mm. I can't say it's a very well written play. Mm. Is it's there, is there acting little... any better than it was two days ago? It's about the same. Damn. <laughs> oh, Matoli, I can't let you go off and face this monster alone. Think of us. Think of our unborn sons. Like, I am thinking of our unborn son. I love him. <laughs> I do this for him and also for you. I am thinking of our son. That's really <laughs> tragic. <laughs> they are very much overacting. Losh very much. He, I mean, he's he's putting in a little. Dramatic. Yeah, he's putting in a little more effort. Uh, there's not an acting bone in this boy's body. He's clearly just mm -hmm. helping out his friend. Finally, the fated third act approaches as the Witch King Angra, or Witch King to be Angra, marches his way into the Black Marsh, where the wicked creature Locus, the Great Devourer, is set. To and he approaches her lair and we see as it is described the horrifying form of Locus appears but there's not a costume so it's just Reese <laughs> uh, just kind of walks out um I'd like to cast minor illusion to make like smoke billow around me Ooh, Ooh nice you just kind of cough up the smoke from the cigar. Um, <laughs> and the lines begin. Uh, Angra approaches Locust. I have found your lair, O bringer of death. Will you not come out and face me like a kaled? And uh, Locust, you look over to Ramada, who is holding up a card behind the patrons. And the line you see is going to be DM'd to you, please. At this moment, I remember Reese needs glasses. At first, tell me if you can read this, because OneNote has a weird way of copying things. Can you read that? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. Oh, Angra, so lost in your fervor. Are you so trusting in your blade to face the Devourer? Alright. Uh, oh, oh, fuck it. I, I like what y'all had. Go ahead and gave, give me the Intimidation check. You may remember what you have, and you may switch it to uh, Expertise mm. for this. Please remember to switch back when, yes. the, when the effect... Yes, only, only one hour. Yes. Cool. Okay. Do you want to add the Guidance? Not yet. Okay. Uh, you see some of the... After dealing with kind of the over and... Un, the slog of over and under acting this entire time, you see the audience kind of... Kind of gasps as mm -hmm. you read the lines of the Devourer. And you see Romano's eyes glow bright. Like... Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Second line. Your words do not strike fear in my heart, worm. As the once and future king of these people, I will put an end to your terror. Locus's second line is thus. Then come, foolish soul, lest your lust for death abate. Easier to die than face your son, no different than the father you hate. Okay, roll another intimidation. Okay. Very nice, very nice. Guidance doing its work. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, whew, you see, people are on the Thank edge you. of their seat, looking to see what Locus will do. Such a compelling antagonist, this Locus. You know nothing of me, witch. I will put you down and prove how a true king leads his people. Through compassion and by example, not fear and control. And you look over to Romano, who holds up a flashcard. It is blank. Oh. Oh. Kind of looks down, like he panics. Oh shit! Uh, Improvise. He, he gestures to you. Improvise. Ah uh, shit. Um. Ah oh, fuck. Oh no. Oh god. Now I have to actually RP. Fuck. <laughs> uh. Okay. What did he? What did he just say? What was his line? Um. Game you pause. know nothing of me, witch. I will put you down. <laughs> this is really can't pause real life. Uh, Ingra's last line was, "You know nothing of me, witch. I will put you down and prove how a true king leads his people through compassion and by example, not fear and control." Hmm. I have to make this rhyme too. God no. <laughs> Fuck, I'm choking. God. I just think he doesn't know what English is anymore. I don't. I don't? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Coco's here. Hi, Coco. Oh, hey. Hi, Coco. Great. You get to watch Mark improv. No. You get to see me suffer. Just in time. I know all I, I need for you take no heed. Too bad you're not up there. He, what, what are you typing? Uh, nothing. Are you a friend right now? No. No. Asking, asking, a, asking an AI, bro? No. <laughs> I don't have that. It, it's online. You don't have to download it, bro. Ooh. Don't you have to pay for it? Seem awfully uh, defensive, Mark. I'm not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the audience waits in bated breath with the long dramatic <laughs> silence uh, from this horrifying <laughs> creature. Ah. <laughs> uh. I'm trying to I'm trying to fucking improv something. I'm sorry. He's joking. Ah. Oh, the fuck rhymes with doom. Gloom. Doom. I guess doom does rhyme with doom. Uh. <laughs> what <rhymes with> words <laughs> that rhyme with doom? I can't remember English. A tomb. Tomb, ah! Uh. <laughs> Tomb, gloom. In in gloom. this 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 cave will be your tomb. Fuck. Doom. <laughs> this this is this is that. appropriate enough for Reese's average intelligence. So this works. This makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I know all I need, for you take no heed. Come face your doom, as this cave will become your tomb. You, st you stuttered at the <laughs> end. Stutter okay, you stuttered at the end. Chris was wavering. I'm, I'm gonna say, roll this with disadvantage. Shut the fuck up, Coco. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what did Coco say? Doom. <laughs> Doom. <laughs> I said coom too, but nobody heard. Oh, thank exactly. <laughs> God. Okay, intimidation check. With a disadvantage. With disadvantage. Well, this guy this might come into come in clutch. Or you know what? You know, for good measure. This is this is the last one, so I may as well. Are you sure it's the yeah. last one? I'm, I'm you pretty sure. You wasted it for a one. Yeah, so got a twenty-two. All right. There is. You saw the the long extended silence was starting to get a little like, huh, what's going on here? And then you come out with that banger of a line and like the stuttering <laughs> oh, is perceived as 
Locus is as intimidating as she is, is faltering at the sight of this great and powerful prince of the Kaelbs, the once and future witch king of the Kaelbs. <laughs> Just as planned. That was totally Angra raises intent. his raises his sword and charges the beast. The great devourer, she who has killed countless, has feasted on the souls of innocence. The great battle commences, and Locus, the disgusting creature from beyond, falls. The audience rises and cheers. Angra returns to his people, having defeated the devourer, only to find his homes in ruin. For he spent so long chasing the great beast, enemies from afar have sacked his king. He sees his wife, pregnant with their son, dying. Oh. In her last act, she is a as though she dies, life is born again. And standing amidst the burning wreckage of his home, finding the burned remains of his father, of his wife, of his family, he holds his infant son and looks over the ruins as the witch king. No. And he looks to his son and says, you are my legacy now. Together we will change <laughs> this for the better. Come with me and we will make this land a better place. My darling Emir. And the play ends. The audience is weeping. They stand, they clap, they cheer, they cry. Uh, a few roses are thrown your way, Reese, as Ooh. you, Losh, and Liar are all gathered up on the stage. Uh, roses are tossed, and celebrations had music plays. Uh, Romano comes up as well, takes a bow with all of you. And you look back and you see uh, Shahara Frost kind of clapping, a little confused, but clapping. <laughs> and kind of approaches uh, Romano and says... You know, I gotta say, I've read some of your uh, some of your previous work. I wasn't really sure what to expect. I do have some notes. I would like to invite you and your players up to my office. And Romano just kind of, yes, yeah, <clears throat> yes, yes, of course, M Mr. Frost, of course, I would be, I would be. <sighs> and he just, he looks like he's about to pass out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but you all are, uh, it, Trixie and Frost, if you would like to tag, if you would like to tag along, you are invited to come up to his office. Oh, we can come too. My entourage. Ah, I sense. need them. Yeah. That's I'll right. say what, whatever you want to say to convince him. I'm, uh, just saying, there is I'm, just, I'm saying I have an unparalleled skill to rhyme stuff. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> So there is a second floor to this map, but considering all the trouble we've gone through, I think I'm just gonna not do it right now. No! I don't wanna see it. it! It's the same map, but only the office is highlighted. Can you crop it somehow? That's not gonna help. Uh, tell you what. I'll, I'll say you guys go upstairs and there's a number of rooms. Uh, one of which that he leads you to. He, there's four doors you can see in this main kind of lobby. He leads you to one. There's three others. If you guys want to snoop around, you're more than welcome. But you see a couple more Dragonborn guards up here. The elite guards. Uh, just kind of standing guard up here. Other than that, this place looks deserted. Uh, but he leads you through into a kind of warmly lit small office. There's another door in the end. Presumably leading to a bedroom or something. You're not entirely sure. Uh, with a window overlooking the other buildings and the swamp beyond, or the marshes beyond. A little bit of both. Uh, and yeah. He kind of sits be behind a desk, pours himself a cup of mead, offers it to anyone who would like some. I'll they have another. Like them. You will not have any. <laughs> Young man, this girl is a, is a 
guest of Shahara Frost. She may have any drink she likes. As her father, I must deny her, though. Make a persuasion check. Persuasion. Does this mean that I get to call you dad now? No. And he just kind of... <laughs> Who am I to deny the wishes of a father? And just slide the drink over to you, Reese. Thank you for no. understanding. When you're of older, course, course. Trixie. When you're older. And he spins... He spends a few minutes talking with Romano and uh, the other players, you include in this, Reese, about the play. And So, I understand that some things will be changed for the sake of, uh, you know, making a more dramatic play. I can't help but notice you got a lot of the historical facts of this wrong. He's like, yes, yes, of course, Mr. Frost, but you have to understand, like you said, this is for dramatic purposes. Some of the finer details, they just, you know... It's, they just don't make sense, right? They, they they would be too complicated for a story. And he replies, yes, well, you know, for one, there's no evidence to suggest that whoever Angra's mate was died when he became the Witch King. And number two, there's no record that he actually did kill Locus. That was you know, purely legend. We don't know. Like, yes, of course, of course, it's... A, and they, they kind of spend a few minutes arguing about what did, what didn't happen, why things were included and stuff. The historical accuracy of certain things. But I must say, you know, I must say the performance of Locus, as inaccurate as it may have been, was quite fantastic. I have to give it up to the young man here. Um, and he kind of gestures to you, Reese, and gives a little clap. Really, all of you are just entertaining. Okay. Thank you, sir. You honor me. Of course. Now then, is there anything I can do for you folk? Please, what were we here for again? I'll go ahead. Uh, I know there's. I know there's been a lot. Oh yeah, um, but Frost. What are we here for again? <laughs> <laughs> the main objective. Main objective was you came to the valley trying to find information about the cult, and you haven't really found any leads yet here. So, given Frost's criminal connections, Hera Frost might be your best bet to find some information. Side quest was to find Baron Cecil Donovan and take him out. Baron Donovan, isn't that the guy that was in the back room? It probably mm -hmm. was. Yep. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. We, we can we can go back later because. That's gonna be loud. That will be loud. <laughs> well, we, we were kind of helping. We we're kind of hoping you would give us some lead. I can still see what I can do. There's a oh, cult. Yeah, cult that you're most likely familiar with. And we need any leads you can give us uh, to them. Can you tell me about this cult? Make sure we're on the same page here. They like doing fucked up sacrifices with or with urchins. Uh, they they like blood, I suppose. Blightthorn, yeah. Yeah, I'm familiar with them. You folk here to stop them? Ideally, yeah. That's the goal. He sighs, seems a little disappointed, like, I guess you're not a player as a main profession, are you, looking over at you, Reese? I'm afraid not. Damn shame. If you ever change your mind, I could do some uh, stay in entertainment here. Mm -hmm. Pay, I pay well. I don't think that Did likes you for say me. pay? No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Momo came out of me just then. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> um. All right. Well, I'll tell you what I know about the Blightthorn. Blood magic, he said. Yeah, that's uh, something they seem to specialize in. Think they work on some kind of a... Uh, some ancient uh, Keldric ritual. 
uh, called filver. It's an ancient word means harvest. Uh, hold on one second. He kind of digs around. You see a large number of large, uh, dusty tomes, and he kind of pulls one out. Blows some dust off. That's how it opens up. These very, like, yellowed old pages. It very much has that old book smell to it. Kind of flips through. Right. Uh, so... Uh, there's a lot of mumbo jumbo here. I don't know if you guys care exactly how the ritual works. Essentially speaking, they uh, seed certain individuals. Those individuals become. Now, what's the word for it? Their blood gets stronger. And when they go out and they kill, the blood is absorbed into them. In a manner of speaking, it makes them stronger. When they're seated, usually at a place of great power, like at a ley line or some ancient shrine or temple or what have you, uh, it creates this sort of place of unholy power that, in some long, hard to pronounce Keraldric word, uh, more common translation for it is called a death garden. Mm, that death garden. Bad. Uh, when a seedling returns with all this blood, it's stored up to its death garden. Uh, they get harvested. And harvested blood from a seedling is, some of the, is one of the most potent magical forces in, that most people can get their hands on. Used for powerful magics. Things like uh, summoning, uh, empowerments, curses, things like that. Hmm. So imagine that's what this cult's up to. They're trying to do some kind of summoning. Supposedly can only be done under the light of the harvest moon. Mm. Yeah. That would make sense. It's thematic of nothing else. Cool. That, uh, that helpful at all? No. Well, now we know we have a time limit, but we don't really have a, a lead. A lead. Uh, you know, normally I charge for these favors, but damn, son, that was a mighty fine performance up there. I'll, I'll see what I can do. So, uh, had reports of a lot of, I think y'all have heard at this point, spiritual activity in the valley has been at an all-time high. I think it's easy to imagine the places where it's strongest is where a lot of this uh, bullshit's going down. One of the worst places up near, uh, Getting a lot of reports near the Kiasta Hills. And I'll, I'll put a spelling of that in the... Let's do it here. I'll, let me get a few spellings real quick. So, I apologize for uh, for Irish spelling of Fover. Oh, no. This. Yeah. Fulmer. Fulver. Yeah. Cleaver. Cleaver. Which I'm not... Uh, which creates the Death Garden. And he is mentioning that the worst spiritual activity is near the Kiasta Hills. Yes, Kiasta Hills. Only Lawrence were here right now. If only. Over. Over I suppose like there's some old uh, tomb or temple or something out there. People that live near that temple are starting to report nightmares. Uh, some people are saying stuff about, you know, having dreams of eaten or being eaten or things are being hunted down by otherworldly creatures. A couple people mentioned a deer of some kind. Uh, mm. yeah. Yeah. No, it's kind of all over the place. But, uh, temple's kind of hard to get into, fortunately. Sounds Supposedly some kind. Hey. We've been lucky enough this far out of town to not really have to deal with any of that temple itself is some kind of some kind of ancient protections on it by whatever god or spirit or what have you used to be worshipped there. Supposedly only uh, only those of Kaeldru blood can pass through according to the legends. Hmm. I don't think any of you us three qualify for that. Probably not. I don't know. Um... 
And it's easy to assume if there's going to be a Death Guard in the area, that'd probably be it, so... I have to wonder, maybe a seedling could pass through it. Whoever doing the witch probably either a seedling or maybe they're just descended a kale or something. I don't know. But... What's a seedling again? Seedling is a, a person, normally a kid, they're more adaptable to change. They're a person that survives the ritual of filter. Oh. Mm. Oh, I see. Sorry if I didn't make that clear. I have a lot of notes here in front of me, and I'm starting to get kind of tired. That's okay. Right. <clears throat> so can anyone perform this ritual? Can the ritual be performed on me so I can be a healing? No, you don't want that, You'd Tracy. probably die. Um. Not so much she would die. If anything, she'd be the only one to survive. Oh. How do you know that? I mean, he kind of points to the book. It's kind of a one of the darker rituals that was strictly forbidden in most Kale society. It involved getting a lot of people together, uh, fattening them up in some kind of ancient magic or mana, whatever you want to call it, and having them beat the shit out of each other. Hmm. Mm. It's not and, exactly uh, like that, but but that's about that's about right. Yeah, what do you know about that? Because I'm a sealy. I survived one of those. Oh, then you can do the thing. Oh shit! Yes, he can. I just got a lot of context for why you folk are here. Shit! All right, well, tell me all about it. What? What happened? What? He, kind of like a loss of composure. He is genuinely like infatuated with the knowledge that you are a seedling. Tell me all about it. What you got? Well. Uh... Well, at first, we are picked up from the street. Yeah. Anyone vulnerable enough to believe that they are going to be given a home is usually easy pickings for them. <laughs> we're, we're, at first, we're well fed and, and trained in basic, in basic combat. Just how to know how to swing a sword, how to throw a fist. Nothing too complicated. Then, we're brought to a tomb. Supposedly, with the pretext, it's going to be some sort of final test for... Ascension, or, or whatever the fuck they called it. Hmm. Once we're all in, we realize the tomb is empty. And they close the, the stone door behind us. At first, there's a lot of confusion. No one really knows what to do at that point. Those with dark vision try to make something happen, but, but can't really break a door like that. And well... Eventually, the hunger get, get, gets too much. And, I'll, and uh, being 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 a team player at that point is a little hard. Catch my drift. Well, damn! Thank you for. Sharing that, he's, he's taking like furious notes and kind of like writing in the margins of his books. You have to forgive my uh, my my lack of decorum. I I never met, never got to meet a seedling. Like... Shit. All right. Well, I mean, according to these texts, yeah, you could probably pass through just fine. The rest of your friends, once they survive the ritual, too, probably not. I'm the only one. So that means that you're going alone? I don't know. Maybe I can give you some of my blood. Maybe that'll, maybe that'll qualify you. You can try that. Uh, I don't really have a lot of information on how to actually get the Kaeldrick blood other than just being born by them. Uh, shh. Uh, you know who might be able to help you out? Um, the, those uh, those bucketheads over in Bear's Reach. Uh, the 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 it's really inside. Or the knights over there. Oh, Seem to have a lot of knowledge on this whole uh, whole ancient magic shit. They uh whole job is protecting the valley from extraplanar threats, and I gotta say they're doing a shit job of that recently, but Vale's 
Veil Between Realms is not in a good position right now. Hillstar is doing everything they can from what I can see, but they don't really have a way of mending those breaks, so... I think one way or another, that might be a good place to start looking. We'll have to pay them a visit. Kind of sounds like it. Well, uh, hope that helps. Thank you very much. This has been a very uh, much more interesting meeting than I expected, so I, I appreciate you all. Um, Acquiescing to my, uh, my strange way of doing things. Oh, uh, by the way, hmm. keep an eye on anyone that sees a deer. It's a little important, very related. Thanks for the info. Make an insight check, Frost. If you would oh. like. You don't have to. Bet. Uh, where is it going to say? Look. Hmm. What else would you like to do? Well, I'm, at that point, we're going to go to the bottom floor. All right. You folks have a good night. Enjoy your stay here at the Bird and Dragon. Thank you. Right, of course. Uh, your main task here has been completed. Uh, whatever you else you wish to get up to here in the casino is up to you. Alright, do we want to kill the Baron guy? Mm. If we can. Like, we know where he is. Were there any windows in there? In his place? There's one uh, very tinted window. Uh, Trixie, you could have seen it from while you were in there. Uh, it's a one-way window. So you can see out of it, you can't see into it. Okay, well that's that's good. There's a tin, tinted window. Uh, uh, how do you open that window? Uh, it doesn't mm. look like it can be opened. Mm. Uh, so like if I if I try to open it with my crowbar, would it work? Oh, and that I mean. Let me be clear. It's not supposed to open. Uh, if you pried it or broke it, I mean, yeah, it's a glass pane. You, it's not going to be hard to remove. It's just not, you know, supposed to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be loud. Most likely. Do Do any of you have fire spells? Um, I've got Scorching Ray, Fireball. Lower tier of fire spells? <laughs> no. Reduce flame. Okay, that works. You said fire spells. I didn't even think to bother mentioning reduce flame. I thought you were going to fireball the whole room. No, no. I, I say we start a fire to keep the card guard distracted and cause a commotion. And mm. and then we brush in and, and and beat that guy into a pulp in five seconds and leave. <laughs> Sounds like a good solid plan. Uh, is there a, like a bathroom? Uh, probably somewhere. Yeah. Then build it on the map. But we'll say yes. We'll say uh, we'll say it's over here next to the ogre. What do you mean next to him? Well, like the door to it, or, or like just a toilet in the middle of the saloon? I would like the door is yes. Okay, we are rich people; they do not shit in front of each other. <laughs> I'm gonna I tell mean, Trixie. Know, maybe that's their thing. Gonna tell, tell Trixie to go in there, make a crumble of, of toilet paper, and put it and light it on fire, and 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 we wait until someone notices the smoke. Do I weigh the session down with the debate over whether or not toilet paper exists at this time period, or I just let it slide? Hmm. Let it slide. Well, how did they wash their ass, bro? Uh, a rag on a stick. Down. Press the digitation. <laughs> I, can, I can believe that, actually. 
I mean, if I have they, if they don't know literal it, then, well, that issue. sucks. I mean, I have lantern oil if you want to spread that in there and, and light it on oh, fire. Oh, okay, okay. That never mind. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what you do with lantern oil, not anyway. Does she need a, the lantern <laughs> oil, or, or is the paper gonna work? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't realize we had swapped back. Uh huh. Sure, we'll say we'll we'll say we'll say toilet paper exists. Sure, why not? Cool. Yield uh, toilet paper. I it's will like, like yield probably. the toilet paper um, on fire and then discreetly leave. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, it's not really. I guess it's not really need to roll for that. You just kind of walk into a bathroom. Yeah, you walk in there. Uh, you see. Uh, there's you kind of hear the sounds of like another lady it's all over like oh good lord stalling what did you eat as you walk out um, <laughs> a couple minutes pass by you see smoke kind of rising from under the ogre like uh, uh, fire fire and he kind of turns and with the massive club just bashes the door down you hear screaming as people kind of run out and he just kind of rushes in as the fire starts to spread Uh, at that point, you see uh, the guy with the cat-ish like hair is kind of perks his ears up, looks over the ogre running into the room. He's like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, Wait. Did that guy leave the room? I haven't gotten there yet. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, you see there's a commotion building as uh, people start seeing the fire and freaking out. Um, you see uh, the the cat guy kind of is confused, looks over, looks back over here just in time to see the guard like, ah, shit. Walks over, unlocks the door and opens it. We're all, we got to fight. Everyone out. And uh, there's a lot of things happen at once, right? As the smoke begins to build. Where? Okay. Before we go any further, where is everybody? Uh, Put yourself on I the map where you are. I, I can't see the map. <laughs> Uh, I feel like we're, we, we would be close to the door, but not in that noticeable way. Yeah, just okay. hanging out by the sure. table, just leaning, listening, you know. So, okay. Uh, just in, to keep in mind, sure. to, give you, to give you an idea of what's going on here, the Dragonborn's over here. Uh, a couple of kobolds running around, freaking out. Uh, you, you see uh, the, uh, the crazy gibberish, but you hear, Oh my word, oh dear, dear me, this is quite unfortunate. Coming from the kobolds with their translation things. Uh, the kobold, or the ogre, you, you can't see him, but you can hear him apparently trying to bash the fire out with his mace. Uh, Romano is gathering up a Liara and Losh like they're getting ready to go. Uh, and the cat man is watching, sees the door open, panics, and hide behind this pillar. Just in time for all the patrons. I'm not going to drag everyone. Sorry. Just in time for the patrons, including, you know, this guy, this guy, and a very lavishly dressed man. Uh, a hard aside call. How common are cat boys in this world? Or, or is he a... I imagine very rare. Or is he <laughs> unique? You have never seen or heard of a man that looks like him. I think he has my cat. Yeah, here. that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm going to have to go beat him up later. <laughs> uh, we're going to roll a... Um, we're going to do a couple of things here real quick. First things first. I already know this is going to go, but just for sake of... Uh, sake of consistency, we're going to roll a stealth check. Ooh! Okay. Versus... Holy shit! Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. He's cool. Not recovering, I'm worried. Uh yeah. Alright, cool. Um you see uh as they rush out, the man you presume to be Baron O'Donovan looks over as the catman very clearly panicking kinda like tries to hide on his pillar, stumbles on a cup that someone dropped in a hurry and falls flat face flat on his face, 
looks up, the two make eye contact. As the smoke begins to rise throughout the, through the casino, they look at each other. And the cat man says, Cecil? Cecil, I can explain. Look, just listen to me. And Cecil says, I told you to stay the fuck away from me! Uh, and not out of rage, but out of panic and fear, he draws his saber and is rushing him. Oh no. Can I, can oh I trip him? him? You want to trip Guys, him? Guys, I made it! There you go. <laughs> oh my god, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Glad you could yeah. join us, Trixie. Yeah. Make, a... Oh make a make an athletics check, bud. I'm not Billy. I don't have. I'm not good at that. Okay. Neither is he. Uh, so he pulls his. Uh, Weapon does actually. Yeah, his rapier. Look at that. Uh, he pulls his rapier and starts charging. Let's say he's over here, I guess. Uh, but you immediately kind of stick your foot out. Whoop! Boom! Face first. Uh, the cowboy sees like, no, 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 wait, 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 hold on, hold. And uh, let me ask, what? Okay. The Baron is on the ground. You see uh, the Catman is getting up. There's a panic. This guard is right here, but he's a little bit distracted at the moment. What is the plan? Because, and I'm saying this because, depending on your answer, we could go into initiative. Combat, mm. combat, combat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... If everyone agrees with my plan, of course, I'm gonna motion for a race to distract the guard even more. <laughs> like, I don't know, check a fucking fireball if you have to. <laughs> and I'm gonna grab the guy, cover his mouth, and, and, and go outside to, like, here. Okay. Um... Yeah, okay. Uh, Reese, how do you distract the guard? Uh, can I minor illusion myself to make it look like I'm on fire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, okay. <laughs> what what components does minor illusion have? Uh, somatic and material. Somatic. Okay. Um, interesting. I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna have the guard roll insight. Because of the chaos, and because of the fact that you could easily disguise <laughs> your, bless you, your somatic components right. as you flail him because you are in fact on fire, I'm going to give him disadvantage on this roll. Alright. Uh, what's your spellcasting DC? Uh, I have a DC 17. Huh. Oh man, he rolled two 16s. But but Trixie used guidance. <laughs> I, I oh fuck, well, that ended she ages ago anyway. So yeah. yeah. Also, this was yeah. not this was a flat DC for him. Uh, he sees Reese casting a spell. Oh shit! Well, um, he's he's still looking at Reese. That's something. Yeah, he sees Reese casting a spell. He sees fire wreathing up around him as the building is on fire. Uh, yeah, he's gonna... Oh. Well, so what the fuck do you think you're doing? I don't know what you're you talking about. about this. I don't know what you're talking about. You think I don't know magic when I say it? Yes. <laughs> I, 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 think, I, I think you should clear your name and try to, to clear the fire with magic if you have anything for that. Uh, I, I cast Frostbite on myself. <laughs> Not one. What? No, on the fire. <laughs> Roll a constitution save, dude. <laughs> I, while that's happening, can I can I do my thing? We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> constitution save, I, right? I want to see. I want to see. I want to see Reese hurt himself. <laughs> yeah. okay, okay, cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you just kind of. <sighs> oh, oh, there's like a little hesitation. Gosh. You're like, oh god. I'm gonna... <clears throat> 
see everything's as you oh. sick like a cold magic hand onto yourself. Oh, uh, goodness, that was that was so close. I was going to Kieran territory with that. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, gosh, magic fingers, man. You think you can do something about this fire? Eh? Uh, yeah, I'll I'll see what I can do. You um, cast some spells in off Cindy here. Think you think you all was and shit. What yeah, can you do. Eh? Uh, I'll see what I can do. Go, go. <laughs> I just have to use my own body to try and smother the flames or something. I don't fucking know. <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on. He just saw a magic man with fire. Okay, meanwhile. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you got him prone. Make another athletics check, Frost. Can I have advantage since he's on, he's on the floor? I'm going to say he has disadvantage. Fair enough. You got to be a fuck. Okay, yeah. Uh, you grab him. Uh, you drag him out. The job is to kill him, right? The job was to get rid of him. Sounds like kill. To Just... quote uh, Shakir's words, he isn't going to mind if you kill him. If you find a way to... If there is a way to get rid of him for good, that doesn't involve killing him, if you prefer that, he just wants to never see him again. Sounds like murder. He, he is a child kidnapper. Uh, assuming the yeah. information is good, I don't I don't feel much sympathy. Oh, well, well, while we're at signing my motion, Tracy, to close the door. I will uh, do so. Uh, which Tracy, door make is he? He's going out this door. Yeah. Tracy, okay. make a general um, make a general dexterity check for me. Seventeen. Okay. You see the catman's rushing you as as you get outside and close the door. Like, wait, wait, wait! But you guys get outside and close the door. Excellent. And I'm uh, going to... Let me double check to make sure that I have it. I'm going to put the immo immovable rod against the door so it doesn't open. Okay, good idea. You, and as soon as you click the button, the door trying to open, slam against it. Wait, just hear me out. Just hear me out. Man's trying to get out. Uh, you've locked him in. Yeah, you've locked him in. You have uh, oh. Cecil to, by yourself. At this point, I, 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 since he's already prone, I'm just going to put his head in the swamp to drown him. <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Holy <laughs> shit. And, right, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm just going to say, all right, buddy, you have until until he runs out of air to explain yourself. <laughs> to, to the cat guy? Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh... So you know better than anyone else, Ollie. Drowning takes a long time in D and D. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, we'll say I don't know. The talking is fucking free. Okay, whatever. We'll say he doesn't have long to explain himself. Cool. I'll call that. Uh, you see, uh, he kind of. The guards are all over the place. The, the Dragonborn is following Reese, making sure he uh, does something. But he doesn't know what Reese can do. He's just saying, better put the fire out. Um, he's like saying, hmm? "No, sorry, I go, go ahead. I apologize." So, uh, it kind of through the, not even through the crack of the door. Rixie, or Rixie, Trixie closed it pretty tight, so you can just kind of barely hear his voice coming through. He's like, "Look, I know he's a bad man. I know he's done horrible things. I don't expect you to forgive him. He must answer for his crimes." But, and keep in mind, Cecil's head is underwater at this point. He's thrashing around. You get the sense he's not going to hear any of this, right? To be what? totally clear. Look, I. I can fix him. Please. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> my, my, no, see, look, listen to me. My, my master, he's a master. He's a powerful wizard. He lives deep in the mountains, far, far from here. I have a raft. I, I have something that can knock him out. He'll be out for hours. I can take him there. There's a, a private house. It'll just be the two of us up in the mountains. He'll have no way of knowing how to get down. Winter's coming in. If he tries to run, he'll die. I will keep him there. I'll keep him safe. I will let him be loved, and he will know he's had such a bad life. You don't understand, all right? He's... I can fix him. Just please. <laughs> please. That's what they all help. say. You can't fix him unless they want to be fixed. You're not there. <laughs> Just answer me this one thing. Where did you get those ears? <laughs> We're on a time limit right now. Can I tell you after... Can I tell you in a second... 
I well, mean, I, I guess that's a way to get rid of him. <laughs> but it is a child kidnap. I don't know if if I want redemption for him. This isn't. You get. You don't get the sense this is redemption. Make an insight check. Anyone who wants to. Yeah. It, 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 Excluding me, right? I'm sure. What? Like, I, I, I can gather that, that it's love, right? Uh, Frost. Yeah, you think it's love. <laughs> Trixie. <laughs> oh God, I don't like that. This, this is the child that got this. Mickey, yeah. I'm gonna talk to you directly and pretend Trixie doesn't exist for a second. Okay. This is a one-sided love. Oh. Oh. Based on the reaction of Cecil when he walked out of the room and saw him, you saw fear, not anger. This is a stalker, isn't it? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, it kind this... of sounds like it. And Ew. he wants to take him away where no one will ever see him again. Well, that sounds like a worse fate. Maybe we should not kill him out loud. <laughs> I mean, he'd never come back, right? And he's trapped in the mountains. If he tries to leave, he'll probably die, so... With this creep... I mean, it sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah, I mean, he's out of our hair either way, so. I, I I'm gonna lift the guy up. <laughs> and I'll. Uh... I will have you reprimanded. I will have. Yes, Trixie. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna <laughs> yank the immovable rod off, press the button, take it off, put it in my bag, and I said, "Okay, come out for a second, just just you." Before you finish, the door flings open. He's mid rant as the as he, the Catman jumps out with this vial of, like, clear liquid, mid-rant grabs him by the throat, pours the liquid down his throat. And I'm gonna close the door as he does this. Yeah. And Cecil... <laughs> Here goes Passes step out. Forward. Well, thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he won't be needing this where he's going. Uh, he has not much... He should have some gold. Where's his... No, find that gold. Whatever. I'm gonna say he has uh, 20 gold on him. This Huge. is a fucking casino. He has 100 gold on him. Huge! Hell yeah! We're gonna divide yeah. it between the party members. And a rapier. A non-magical rapier. Bro, you wanna divide 100? Are you that broke? <laughs> hey, gold's uh, gold. I might as well be. Alright, 35 for everyone, but one person gets... No, 35 doesn't work at... Uh, 34 for everyone, I think. Are we counting Billy? Question mark? It, it didn't work for this. Come on. So man. Man. That's 33.33333. Alright, so, so basically two people get a 33, one person gets 34. I say you get 34 because you pickpocketed him. Yeah, uh, I don't deserve this. And then the rest of us get 33. Yeah, just then to... I will take it. Then I will take fifty. No, no, <laughs> no, you won't. I'm broke. Well, she doesn't deserve it, but he's still gonna your take it. Gold. I played my part. Literally. That's right. I guess. I guess Reese is just running around like casting prestidigitation on every little patch of fire you can find. Because it can do that. Apparently, you can snuff out nice. flames. Yeah. Uh, you're running around. This guard is basically like pulling a. You're the only one who's gonna get this reference. Oh, Arthur, wish you're here. He's basically pulling Coach Wise on you. Ah. He's kind of following you around, yelling at <laughs> you as you do it. <laughs> faster, 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 sci-fi. That's what he called me. My group of friends in health class. I'm sorry. That was a really very specific no, I, reference. Sci-fi, yeah, because we were a bunch of fucking nerds. Oh. <laughs> I love God, that. Was, I love that so much. He was fantastic. Right, back to the oh, horrible anyway. kidnapping. Right. Um, <laughs> the, did you say kidnapping? Kidnapping. Oh, damn it. I, I wish you... I'm glad you didn't, actually. No! Very cool. so, you see, um, uh, the man with the cat ears kind of grabs uh, Cecil as he passes out in his arms and just kind of lands in the jail. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Looks up at you all. Fuck me, that was close. I thank you all for being so understanding, really. Um, shit. Uh, my raft's on the other side of this. Coming out of this door is actually really unlucky for us. Uh, we'll figure something out. I believe in you. But still, why did you get those ears? 
Right, right. Um, my uh, my master, he's um, it's, uh, a great midget, a great mage, uh, studiers of the old ways and whatnot. I I found him when I was a young man, and he he told me the tales of old Kale and the wild gods. And I was particularly enamored with stories of the huntress, Kermith. Uh, give me a second. I'll give you the spelling for that. Then let's write it down. Here we go. The Get me the Great Huntress. And, uh, well, I wanted to, uh, I spent most of my life, you know, walking through shadows and you know, striking out and being a stealthy son of a bitch. And, um, I, the tales of her were fascinating to me, and I, I don't know if she's still around or still actively being worshipped, but I'd hoped maybe an act of devotion powerful enough can maybe wake her from her slumber so I I asked my minister to give me some aspects of her true form that of a great tiger so we found a cat and I had hoped to adopt more aspects of their physical form to my own body and only the ears worked so um, swapped my ears and his when you say black cat, you, you mean one with yellow eyes, uh, a, a white paws? It's been so long, I don't. Because I, mean, I, as I adopted a cat, it has human ears now. I've, I've been wondering for a while why why that why that was a thing. Oh shit! Huh? Small world. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm I'm a laugh. I am the owner of your cat's ears, apparently. <laughs> That's better, weird. Better be Whoa. taking good care of it, because I'm taking good care of your fucking ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. I am keeping these ears nice and clean so I can perceive all sounds around me just as my wonderful goddess would probably ask. Hmm. Right. Uh, I, I, I initially meant to punch whoever took the ears, but it seems like you did it for for an actual reason, not just for luck. So I guess I'll, I'll, let, I'll, let, it, I'll let it slide. It was done as an, as an act of worship. I do hope you can respect it. Just, just right. be more respectful to the animal next time. If you, if there's a next time. Was I not respectful? Absolutely. Dropping it back to the streets is not exactly that cool. I mean, that's where I found it. That's what you do when you when you take things, you just put it back where you found it. Problem is that they have human ears, mate. Children children were throwing stones at the cat for, for oh, being shit. a freak. It could have been experimented on. Oh, either way, go take your fucked up dude and get out of here before I change my mind. Well, uh, before I go, I did, uh, we never got a chance to talk to terms, but I was going to offer payment if you uh, acquiesced to my request, and you did, so, um, Excellent. he kind of reaches to a dagger on his belt and pulls it out. Well, I didn't have to use this tonight. Flips it over by the handle and just kind of holds it out to whoever wants it. I will you see it. the kind of you see this kind of beautiful, like, ivory handle um, with this kind of dark, like, dark green um, lacquer on the blade. Hmm. It's got me out of more than a... It's got you out of more of what? It's got me out of more than a f more close calls than I can count. I was ready to get out another one tonight, so... Appreciate you all uh, not making that happen. Thank right. you very much. I have uh, kind of smiles. I have the rest of my life to live. Have fun. 
I will, and I'd say I'll see folks around, but I probably won't. Don't forget, Mr. Cacti, he must never be seen again. You have my word, little girl. You have my word. Excellent. And uh, he and Cecil are gonna figure out how to get onto his raft. I believe in them. No. We don't need to see their adventures. We'll just say they make it. And you Thank hear God. the gentle sounds of paddling against the water as a lamplight seeds in the distance. Excellent. Lord C or Baron Cecil O'Donovan has been handled. Kidnapped. He has been chloroformed. <laughs> <laughs> little fucked up. I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's kind of grim, honestly. But um, a little, a little bit. I mean, they're, it, you guys could have killed him. It is a child kid. I was a fuck him. Yeah. True. Very, very true. Oh, well, like I, I decided to draw the guy on swamp for a reason. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so this all point, right. the fire's all uh, resolved. So I'm probably gonna. Yeah. But, uh, you see the, the guard kind of just like stares at you, Reese, as you walk out like <laughs> uh, uh, you can't do anything to stop me. <laughs> See you around, soft boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it all uh, taken care of? Yep. Also, that was weird. What? You did a whole... A clicky, clicky oh, thing. Was it was it, a little weird. Was it weird? I I'm, don't know. I'm... It, it was different from you, from from your usual. It, it was it was it was different. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry for trying to tr try new <laughs> things. I think we should go get our stuff before <laughs> the chaos becomes too much. Yeah, yeah perhaps we should uh, abscond. Sounds good. Should we should uh, what? Yeah. Abscond. God, <laughs> I be in one play. I'm acting like this. This is ridiculous. Let's go home. <laughs> Uh, you see, uh, as you walk out, Ramona kind of like, the bug kind of catches on fast, doesn't it? God, this is the worst. <laughs> I hate this. I think you have a future in acting, Reese. Oh, Don't God. deny your calling. <laughs> Trixie, when we get back home, I'm rolling in some dirt. I am going to a gambling hall. I have to get this out of me. I am not moving manually and it's lagging up. <laughs> Just get me out. <laughs> we're, 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 we're done with this map. Let uh, me we'll go back. We'll go back to Franklin. Uh, yeah, you guys gather up your weapons from the ticket house and uh, head back to the city. It is late at night at this point. Um, and you kind of walk with Ramon and the players a bit. Uh, Liara and Losh are very excited at... They've kind of got the... A bit of a mix of post... -perf Liara more post... More than Losh has kind of like those post-performance blues, um, but also just kind of that went so well. Oh my god, they're kind of just talking. Losh seems like he's actually getting into it now. Oh. Um, but they, uh, y'all make your way back to the city, and just kind of this happy, jubilant tone. Uh, Romano takes everyone to the tavern and buys around on him for everyone. Excellent. And you guys, uh, they, they stay up late, um, kind of just talking about future. Romano talks about how, oh, thank God I don't have to write historical fiction anymore. I can get back to the good stuff now. Good Lord. And the other two are just kind of talking. Uh, it goes on late. Uh, Liara kind of passes out on Losh's shoulder, who's also out at this point. Um, gets close to like one or two in the morning. People start clearing out. They just kind of, kind of sleep in the chairs by the fire. You guys still have your rooms. Unless there's anything else you guys want to do tonight. Conversations you wish to have. Mm, I think Trixie's tired. She might just kind of head to bed. Yeah. Then you all uh, head to bed. Uh, I don't think anyone expended anything. Maybe some spell slots. Um, The night passes without incident. You've avoided combat. Very narrowly in some situations. Damn. But you got a lot of information. Nice. 
and you wake up the next day. You have a destination in mind. You have what did, some idea of where to go. What the dagger do, though? Yeah. What, what What do the dagger do? Did anyone spend the night attuning to it? But what does it do? You don't know. Come on. Does anyone have a tumor slot left at this point? Uh, I have three out of three. I don't. Um, like well, technically, think, uh, I think I, I have could... two more. Technically, no, I have. Uh, hold on. I got my vial. I have my rosary. So yeah, I've got one more. If it's a combat weapon, I my simple simple weapons count as a monk weapon for me and. I'm dual wielding at all times, but I don't know. I don't want to hog out all the magic items. <laughs> I think Billy has some slots left. Uh, how, how about Trixie attunes to it so he knows, knows Wait, what to do? Hold on, hold on, hold I on. I can attune to it. I have three other attunements. Okay, Ooh. so... Apparently you can just study an item for like an hour, and you can find out what it does. That's lame. You, you don't need to cast Identify, apparently. Oh, I think Identify actually tells you what it does. No, it, it's oh. just super fast. That's all. That's the only difference. Oh. Well, 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 why do you do then? Uh, the Identify spells the fastest way to reveal an item's property. Alternatively, a character can focus on one magic item during a short rest while being in physical contact with the item. At the end of the rest, the character learns the item's properties as well as how to use them. Potions are the exception. A little taste is enough to tell the taster what the potion does. This is from the DMG Chapter 7. Alright, All right. I'll study it. Alright. Do it. Cool. Uh, you see the ivory blade with the beautiful lacquered green handle. Kind of uh, looking over the blade, you see uh, a mechanism on the handle that seems to release some kind of magically imbued vial hidden within the handle. Releases a thin kind of gossamer coating over the blade that you can almost feel just radiates um something back that just burns your nose hairs even being close to it uh you get the sense this would do a sh this would not be pleasant to be stabbed with while it's in this condition no way it's like a poison uh, it only the poison only seems to last for a minute and you get the sense it's not sturdy enough and will uh, only last for one attack. But it would be one hell of an attack. Alright, so this is for Billy. So he, can sneak, he can sneak attack one shot someone. True. Well, uh, I think since Billy's not here at the moment... And I don't really want to go too much farther without off. I know it's a little early for our D and D games, but I think maybe we'll call it there for tonight. Sounds good. Are we were we at least going to get the reward from the uh, hunting guild? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's go do that. Uh, sure. Oh uh, yeah, you the uh, next morning you return to uh, the Hill Striders, uh, find Shakir in his office as uh, the rain begins again. Welcome back. What's the what's the situation? He's taken care of. He's definitely handled. Good deal. All right. You said on what you want for your reward. We'll take the coat, or the cape, or the cloak, or whatever the fuck it was. It was a coat. Okay. Who wants it? Uh, no, just, he just kind of tosses it. Uh, he said it was... Y'all rolled uh, shit in your arcana checks, you just know it was something defensive. Okay. Well, look, well, Riz didn't speak up, so I'm gonna... No, I want it! I want it! I was gonna take it now! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Reese, what kind of armor do you have on right now? Uh, none. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a... A uh, very stylish. Uh, this is actually kind of similar to style you saw some um, some monks, 
some desert wanderers down in Elnassar they kind of wore. It's hmm. a duster. Oh. Uh, dark in color, so it kind of matches your aesthetic. For better or for worse. Fantastic. What do you do, though? What do? What do you do? What, what does the coat do, uh, Cole? It don't do. <laughs> uh, do you wish to attune to it? Fuck it. I don't see why not. Sure. We'll say you can take some time to tune to it, wherever, if you want to be with the Hill Striders, or if you want to, wherever you're going to do it. Yeah, we'll say you tune to it. I will put this in your inventory. As soon as I find it. I found it. Let me read at your leisure. Let's see, where is it? Under your equipment. Oh, there it is. This was a desert style, the most popular region of Elnassar. High collar, perfect for shielding against high winds. Shimmering lining. Hints at its magical properties. You get a plus one bonus, <laughs> bonus to AC while wearing the coat, which can be worn over light armor. Additionally, the coat has three charges and regains 1d3 extended charges daily at dawn. When you're the target of an attack while wearing the coat, you can spend one charge as a reaction to gain resistance to one type of damage from the triggering attack. Resistance is effective against the triggering attack and lasts till the start of my next turn. Okay, that's pretty cool. How'd that, though? That would have been useful. I don't know. It's too late. Yeah, a little bit of defense for you. I believe if you equip it, it should automatically affect your AC. There it is. There it goes. Cool. There you go. Not gonna keep you too much more alive, but hopes you'd help a little bit. I can't take a hit to save my life, so... <laughs> so buy me an extra round. My mind is still on drinking. I was like, are you asking Shakira or the coat to buy you a round? Uh, I mean, it's worth like 3000 so it could buy me a few rounds. Like... Like, you completed Shakira's questline, now he's available to marry, you just have to find him have first. Have to <laughs> wear the medallion, talk to him. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. What is, I guess the closest thing, I guess Saluna would be the goddess of love in this uh, fan. Hmm. God, Saluna's a goddess of a lot of things. It's the well, goddess they dump everything else onto, I guess. Uh, what, the moon, uh, autumn, and love. Actually, that's about it. Moon, autumn, of love. So also, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Frost, was it? Yeah. Come back tonight. I'll get you that match you're looking for. Excellent. Pecker boy Sean here's been itching for a fight for a while now. Uh, uh, I'll be there then. Huh. All right. See you then. Yeah, now we will end the second fight. Woo! Yeah. I hope we get off the stuff fixed for next week. Yeah. Okay. There's a significant. I could feel the lack of Billy chaos this episode. I know. We were too organized. Yeah. We were too effective. You're too efficient. <laughs> Unacceptable. I can't necessarily call Billy's Chaos unaffected, to be fair. It, it works. It works in a horrifying way, but it does work. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, wow. Alfie, love you. Love you. <laughs> yeah. We do. We missed you. Maybe we'll just say, like, maybe we'll just have a little side, a side of what Billy's been up to this, uh, tonight. Okay, excellent. Yeah, we'll give, we'll give him a little bit of time to catch up next session, I think. Yeah, 
there, uh, thank you for finally playing Dressonian Gambit after all these years. Yeah, we had to throw you a bone eventually. <laughs> and you won! I guess, yeah. I think you still had, like, a net loss, but I think you still won. Uh, no, I, I think I had a small gain of, like, ten gold. Nice. So, pretty good. There you go. No one bought a drink. No. Nope. I don't think Reese would have let me. I would not have. Damn it. You're Drew, do you have stealth? That's true, I also have class without a trace. I could have snuck one. That's, uh, that's all I got for y'all tonight. That's all, folks. Oh. Okay. Sorry for the kind of the, the dark alternate quest, but I thought it'd be... That was very grim. Something interesting. Exceptionally grim. Y'all ever play Dishonored? Uh, no. Yes. Yep, I, I played the first one. I think There's I owned a... the second one, too. There's an alternate uh, ending to a mission in the first one that I remember as a kid was like, that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> several years later, it's in the D and D game. Nice. It's all uh, come full circle. Uh, I'll try multiple times to get into the other. Never happened. I loved the first game. I owned the second game. I'd never got very far in it. Should play some more. I don't think I finished the first one. Dishonored is one of those games where you can speedrun it, and it it does speed or not speedrun, but like just kind of plow through the main story, and it's like cool, it's awesome, and like you're gonna have a good time. I mean, if you like the kind of game, of course. But um, I've noticed if you take your time, like go to all the side rooms, read all the side content, like like do everything, it's almost like a completely different game. Not to say one is better than the other, it's just like, it's insane that there's so much detail and... Like, if you go like a mile out of your way to some rusty corner, you find like some lore book that's like... Completely changes your understanding of the game, it's like, oh shit. Huh. Cool. It also makes the missions take way, lo way longer though. Yeah, that makes sense. Remember I asked for it for my birthday when I was like, I think like 13, and my dad said he didn't, he didn't, he didn't know if he wanted to get me a game about being dishonored, because it was like, that sounds like a bad thing. I'm like, yeah dad, yeah. it probably is. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got it. Alright, we're playing Dark and Darker now. Ah. Darker, Darker, Ooh. They had a bar to mark. You gave me your award. I I did. I'm gonna play it tomorrow. I guess Why I should. Why not tonight? Uh, cause I'm sleepy. God damn it. Rude. I'm sorry. Oh guys, I got yeah. um, I got a game. I told Cole. I forgot what it is. Uh, Valheim. Oh yeah. Yeah, I ended up getting Valheim. I, know I like I to told imagine Cole, but I don't think I told anybody else. This is not really that, but I'm looking at the chat and like to imagine Coco is cheering chloroform. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Which no. there was an actual item for it, by the way. There was a uh, what was it? Where is it? Essence of Ether, is what it's called. Hmm. The plan was he was going to give you guys some to use for yourself, but I think it's worked out just fine. Yeah. Yo, Mickey. Uh -huh. Have you have you been preached the word of, of dark and darker before? Uh, I think you did it a, a while ago. It's a game based on D and D. You you mentioned that. You can be a barbarian, a cleric, a bard. Not a warlock though. They they haven't had enough. What? That's exceptionally rude. <laughs> well, thank you, Anna. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. 
Yeah, I guess I should download it. Coco's and... asking why we didn't get the item. The the the, the, the ether, <laughs> yeah. Because we're too good at the game. We didn't even need it. No, you kind of got the guy to do the hard the work for you. Yeah. This is true. It worked out great. Uh, Mark, I will say, what? Uh, my massive fat fucking head is covering the chat a little bit when it pops up in your stream. <laughs> oh, does it? Oh shit! I forgot I even Coco, had the. No. I forgot I had the chat pop up. Coco, you get to listen to our our Bye, post game banter. Oh god, yes, yeah, it's completely covered. Wow, I'm an idiot. Let me. Gotta move this over. There, now it's mostly visible. <laughs> but now we're all cramped together, and it looks weird. It, we're just, Can you just move me. the chat and keep me where I was? Uh, no, because there's... That's so weird, because the chat's in the middle of all of us! That's okay, it's like we're reading the chat together. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the other option... Well, Billy's not here, so it's hard to, like, measure out properly. Uh, oh, God. Uh, or you could put it up at the, the top <laughs> Put me in the middle. <laughs> Okay, yeah, there's what? there's space. You there could you also put it up at the top left corner or right corner. Coco, if you join this game as a guest character, I will let you have chloroform. No. <laughs> no! Yes! Chaos. Rain chaos. You just have to learn how to use Foundry. Sorry. That's the hard part. I will help you. We must. <laughs> I will let you choose... <laughs> If, I will let you choose one NPC in this game to chloroform and kidnap. Oh. And I, 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 will, I will alter the game to reflect this no, new reality. No, please don't do that. Yes. <laughs> Who do we have as options? Let's see. We have... Um, I'm going to say no player characters. No player characters. Uh, we have... Um, God, who would Coco want to fucking... Um, I mean, my gut instinct is the cat boy, but also we need him to stay there. Where's the... Here we go. Uh, the non-binary twink priest. No! I He's my friend! <laughs> they are your friend, please. Oh, yeah. They, they, are, they are my friend. What about what, what, the about, little what about, baby... What the about the, the baby? Uh, what about the boy the cat? The baby uh, to Torin thing. What about the boy cat, Cole? You want her to, to chloroform the or, or the 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 other one, but it's a lady. I don't know. Uh, uh Sonata? Yeah. Uh, I don't what know about, if Coco's into animal what about, people. What about Gavin? Except for cat. The cat boy. <laughs> Gavin is a cat. <laughs> a cat boy. Is yeah. a twink? A boy cat. A twink. Uh, Reese is um, a twink. No. <laughs> no, shut up. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, here's a twink. Here's a twink. Hold Reese on, is a twink. <laughs> Reese is in a white-haired anime boy. Here's a twink. <laughs> She's... Here's a twink. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh wait, no, I don't know if Co. Bring up Bora's picture. Uh, she's not a twink, but she's Bora. hot. <laughs> oh wait, no. Here we go. Here we go. I'll take it! Yes! We'll Here's a perfect one for Bora you, Coco. Ever again. Someone else likes Bora! Yes! Here we go. Uh, Coco, I present to you Steve. <laughs> Steve. This is just how Shirtless he looks in muscle. universe. 
He's just really low render <laughs> all the time. <laughs> he was cursed. All he said, all he was an asshole at session zero and was like, started making up an NPC on the spot. I was like, oh, hey, Steve, the one eyed Goliath. And I was like, fuck you, Ollie. So I found a picture. <laughs> No, Coco, uh, you don't okay. understand. They're drawn on. It's different. Okay, do you want the uh, unfinished artwork of Professor Aaron Duquesne? <laughs> it's still unfinished. I will never finish it. Come on. This is its final form. It's the same for two That's a job. Coco. <laughs> <Go, go. laughs> <laughs> yes, Coco, there was there was a cat boy. He was the focus of this episode. One of the focuses of this episode. But we need him because he's holding the other person hostage. Uh there's also uh there is Let a Let me chloro him. <laughs> he was he was the one that chloroed. So it'd be chloro on chloro. You, you deploring the original Chloro guy. <laughs> uh, there's the Twink Dragonborn. You don't want to Chloro him. You don't want to. We can Chloro <laughs> each other. <laughs> it will be sight. sight? Oh, oh cute, 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 cute. I, sure, <laughs> okay. I don't know where. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you could probably, like, if, if both of them big. disappear for the rest of time, like, I I think I'm okay with that. And uh, then she'll just hold both of them captive. Again, not a twink, but muscle girl. I like her, too. Coco doesn't really like muscle, though, in general. Mm-hmm. Uh... There is... Uh, how about this asshole? Oh yeah, you can definitely kidnap him. Yeah, keep... Get him out of here. You can keep him. We have no need for him. Um... Hmm. Stop trashing on the trash. <laughs> Oh, trash people? Okay, uh, here's here's a good here's a good one. <laughs> Funny enough, the the name of this creature is the sound that Mark just made. <laughs> Dretch. Ew. Okay, let me see if I can find an actual um ice skill come to your house. Alright. Silk. Uh okay. Oh here we go. <laughs> Uh, rest in peace, but her. She's fucking dead. She's fucking dead. Thank God. She will never attack Reese ever again. Um. Her outfit is very cool, though. Mm hmm. Uh, okay, she hasn't been in since the, uh, the mini-campaign, but she still exists, I guess. Who is this lady? Okay. She was the she blacksmith in, uh, Mash Light. Oh, yeah. From the mini-campaign. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ooh, here we go. Mickey's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> the harassment turkey, I should call it. <laughs> Why do we have a turkey picture in here? Uh, I uploaded it when Mickey uh, summoned turkeys for the owlbear to eat. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Looks like a Mickey character. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean, Coco? Coco? Coco! <laughs> Coco, I don't play ugly turkey. Hey, the turkey is I a beautiful play creature. Cute characters, even if they're weird. Uh, but this person doesn't. Cute. This person doesn't have a name, but I like their art. Their art is very cool. Coco, Coco, Coco. 
Uh, these Coco. are just. Uh... Okay, Coco. Man or woman? Hmm. Okay. Uh... And then. <laughs> and then this bitch. You can't have oh, her. Oh, I like her. You can't have her. I like her. I can fix her. No! Bro, I can fix her! <laughs> okay, you'll take any of their twigs. Yeah, I was gonna show Ludo, but I guess not. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna private message you some, some images I have saved. Oh boy. Uh I think that's most of the interesting characters I have on. I don't have a lot of everyone Mickey keeps flirting with my enemies, so I think I've started making uglier and uglier NPCs. How it's dare only, you! It's the only And way. I don't technically flirt with them. I'm a child. It's just me, myself, and I that does that. I s did say Mickey, not Trixie. Yeah, I chose my words fair. very carefully. Yeah, you're fair. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Which, so uh... Nice. The first, uh, Coco, actually, the first, uh, villain Mickey fell in love with was, uh, the art you did for me years ago. Oh, of the really white-haired, uh, witch lady. Yes. So, there you go. I want to see her again. Do you have, uh... I, I still have the art, the yeah. Art? Let me, uh... Send me! I, I keep thinking I want her to come back at some point since we never got resolution on her story. I just... How is she? <laughs> <laughs> I hope she's in I'm hell. I'm afraid. I'm afraid in your horniness you killed. Wait. Mm. No. Oh, anyway, wait, moving wait, on. Hold on. No. Mm. I'm moving. I'm, we're, we're, we're stopping that one. We're moving on. Uh, where the fuck is it? Um, probably be here. Uh, there's Coco sketches. Where's the actual art? Where are? Where's my other thing saved? I have a really good there it is. art that Coco would like, and I don't know if it's saved on Pinterest or if it's in my files. Coco, I'm posting this in Heart of the Wildlands in the D and D server. If you want to take a look, I'll do. I'll do it in Dungo so Flint can see too. Not that. Yeah, there we go. It must be in Pinterest. That's such a good art. Yeah, I haven't actually seen this art in so long. I love it so much. <laughs> God, I have a lot of art in... Holy shit, that's a horrifying Hagar I never got to use. Wait, what? No, I was looking through my old, uh, the, the art I had for Winter Sun, and there's a lot of art I never got to use, and I found a horrifying one. Oh, let's see. I, ha I have the original image I was going to use for Asha. Do you? But then I was like, you know what? No, I, I'm gonna be a child, so I, I don't have to face the consequences of my action. <laughs> I found this whore. I was gonna have a hag at some point, and that was gonna be her. Ugh. Yeah. Horrifying, right? Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, I know. But you're holding that fish like that. That's weird. Damn. And th th this is the. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's very cool. I know I have some twink dudes saved in Pinterest for character stuff for NPCs. Where are they? Um, what else is that? Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. I had this really pretty art for a. Uh...
back when I tried making my own Pantheon, before I realized making a Pantheon was hard. Indeed. Wag. And I had an NPC that I had, um... What's the name? Um... I had, like, temporarily called, oh, this looks like a, a bird queen lady. I'm going to call her the Raven Queen. Genuinely, before I knew there was already a Raven Queen in D&D canon. Mm. So I got sad that I had to change it, because, like, that's not going to make any sense. So I, I still have her picture saved as Raven Queen. Haha, mm. -ha, I found the dudes. The dudes. The dudes. The dudes. The dude. Let's see which one is her favorite. I'm gonna go through memory lane with Coco sketches again. Found some good Twinkie men for ya, Coco. Oh. Uh, throwback Thursday. <laughs> what? What was the context of this one? I I, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey's spider familiar had a gun for some reason. Oh, was talking about getting a gun. <laughs> I don't know if I remember that, but um, surely it happened. <laughs> oh, there's this one that was super comfy. Oh, yeah. Miss Coil. He was He's doing alright. That's a lot of images on, on that first campaign I was going to use that I never did. Like what? One of these days we'll get Elekin and maybe a bunch of the Winter Sun characters back. One day. Just, just the one shot that everyone brings their 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 children character. God, daycare. <laughs> we, oh my god, Mark, <laughs> we could have Mark play the babysitter because that's what he's always uh, like, really going to anyway. I do every that's fucking so game. Funny. God. Ashes, Elekin, Kira, Billy. Not Kira. <laughs> I mean, Trixie. I mean, might as well be care. Yeah, I, I think we joked, like, <laughs> session two or whatever. It's like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the only True. adult in the party. Pretty much. She was a very irresponsible adult. Oh, yeah, and was sort of responsible. Kind of. Kind of. Oh, here's a... I don't remember the context of this, but here's Elegant with a thousand yard stare. I don't remember the context for I this. I think that was just a drawing? Koki, do you remember this? Using CSP. Oh. I don't know what that is, but it's really pretty. Eclipse Studio Paint. No. How did I use? I really love the way you drew Obel, honestly. Oh my god, I forgot how you drew Kleist. The fucking mustache. Here's another set, Coco. I send you all the love. I think I haven't drawn anything D and D related because I already picked on like early sessions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're not you're not getting any better. <laughs> <laughs> Trixie being just the fucking default like wow no default one of four <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. 
If I, if I managed to focus on the session while drawing, I would, but I, I can't. I, I, I can't focus one on the other. I, it was completely unintentional that in both of my main campaigns, Ollie's character has been harassed by an evil deer. <laughs> <laughs> if, if Frost ever fights that deer, I'll just make a Frost version. <laughs> Take notes that, and that see cool, right? yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Do it, dude. I'll, I'll draw Frost drawing the guy in the fucking swamp while the child watches. <laughs> <laughs> she seems to uh, to have a slight bit of pride as he does so. <laughs> just like, ah, oh, yes, that's my adopted dad. Look at him go. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just seeing her doing like the colon D face. <laughs> Colon. Yeah. 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 No. Right? No, no, she's proud of him. She's like, yeah, this is great. Like like yeah. uh like this. Yeah. yeah or or this. <laughs> well, why do I have a bunch of car crashing modes called poggers? Oh, it's from the fucking <laughs> Final Fantasy Discord. I don't know why. This isn't necessarily a throwback, but the the spring one still made oh, me yeah, that happy. Was... Oh, those ones were so cute. Don't be mean to me, I will cry. <laughs> <laughs> and then scribble in the background with with their giant robot. <laughs> I, again, appreciate how luscious... I don't remember the elf's fucking name. I appreciate how luscious his hair is. <laughs> and Ollie doing an a-woo. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but every time I, I saw the the, blo the Blood Hunter sub subclass, I was like, fuck, man, this is just a... This is fucking WoW Wargan, and that, that's super furry. <laughs> That's just what a werewolf is, dude. Yeah. No, there's a, there's one thing being a controlled werewolf with human features, and another thing is just being a fucking werewolf. Okay, yeah, I guess that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I can't argue with that. Anyway, Final Fantasy sketches. Shit. Final Fantasy sketches. There we go. Yeah, those are great. <laughs> Rune having the fucking like realistic gun is still really funny <laughs> to me. <laughs> Just a really is... lar a large 1911. What was Lukia holding at the end? Or was she just stretching? I'm just stretching. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I thought that. Okay, I see it. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it. Because I was the only one who didn't fail the the save, and so everyone was freaking out, and I, I was just vibing. <laughs> I still have I still have sexy Elok too. The twinkified Elok. I made him as buff as I could. Toka said no. <laughs> Not allowed. Not allowed. I lock. like how one arm is bigger than the other. Like, she shrunk down one of them, and then, like, he's like, No, I'm fighting it! This arm will be bigger! I have to have muscles! That's my chloroforming arm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you made her drop fingies. <laughs> I didn't make her do anything. All I wanted was to bring him here to die. So the draw for no reason this sudden. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that nobody in Final Fantasy XIV has a southern accent. I'm not supposed to it was hot, so I don't I just, what am I supposed to say? I suppose there's someone who can have that voice. Yeah. Why not the twink from the <laughs> Mongolia stand? And why not he have a Southern American accent? Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Just one dude out there raising his <laughs> Yeah. Oh, fucking... Coco on? said, "Nikki, please play a twink. Please, I need it." 
<laughs> I've been sending her images of twinks. Uh, let's see, how many did I send? pictures. <laughs> I I could play a twink, but also like I have the art for the twink, but am I a good twink? You hmm. know? That that's the problem. You've only I, played at, at girls thus far, right? Yeah. Well, girls and non-binary. Yeah. Right. I don't remember the non-binary, honestly. <laughs> Uh, that's fair. They, most of them are little critters, so. Don't l snort laugh <laughs> at me. Things being called critters is funny to me. Why? I don't know. <laughs> wow. But yeah, I, I think all of them have been little critters that have been non-binary. I could play a twink. I sent her several that... Oh, um... <laughs> oh fuck, what was I gonna make them? Was I gonna make them a sorcerer? I think so. Cole, do you remember the yeah. uh, non-binary uh, white hair, red eye twink that I sent you that I wanted to be like, I think I wanted them to be a bard. I remember it. I don't <laughs> I don't think I have any chance in hell of finding that picture. That's Oh no, far, I have it. I sent it gone. to Coco. Oh. I sent it to Coco. Oh, yeah, I remember it. Yeah, hold on. Let me send it to Dungos. There's a couple variations of them. One, two. And this one. One of these days I will play that character. I feel like I've seen this character before. Probably. I think it's from something. But I like them and I want to play them. But I don't think it works for the noble thing, unfortunately. Oh yeah, that's absolutely a character Coco would freak over. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. It's just Alpha though. It's Alphano and Alice I fuse because he's wearing red. Oh, right. But he also has like, kind of a blue shirt, so yeah, you're right. I could probably play this one in the noble thing. Even though I came up with like 47 goddamn options for, for the art. I have a problem, I've accepted that. Is that Coke on the table? I don't know, probably. That, that, no, it looks are, like paint splatter. No, those are lines. <laughs> it looks like paint splatter to me, but, you know, if it's, it's Coke, that's fine. I, I read it as Coke. <laughs> I, I am proud of you. Ooh. Well, I guess I'll go finish making my um my character for Sunday. Well, we're not actually starting on Sunday. We're just doing a session zero. Mm -hmm. I know, but I need a character. <laughs> I have to figure out what I want to do. I mean, I mean, if you want to talk about it if, uh, on session zero before having anything, you can. That's what I'm. I'm waiting for the session zero before I make uh, a hard decision on what I want to play. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do I need like a character up though? No. 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 This is. It's. We haven't. So. What we've been calling session zero, and I take responsibility for this because I think I'm one. I'm the one that started calling it these. Isn't actually what a technical session zero is. An actual session zero is supposed to be when you gather your players together before the game starts, like all in a group, and say, "Okay, here's the rules. Here's the expectations. 
Uh, let's talk about, you know, um, like uh, trigger warnings. Let's talk about homebrew we're going to be using. Let's talk about uh, content you want to see, content you don't want to see. Here's the location we're going to be, all that stuff. Mm. And then a lot of times people say, okay, here's a character I want to play. Uh, so we don't really have like, so there's not really too much crossover of everyone wants to be a sorcerer or whatever. Mm -hmm. Unless people are okay with that. You, you know what I mean. Laughing, laughing, true humans. In four <laughs> humans, I... five humans. Six and they humans. play a five. human also. Five humans, then. Oh my god. <laughs> this is, this is so wrong. Funny. This is not I correct. It would be funny, yes, 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 yes. I thought it was appropriate that Mark's the only one. If you if you told me in the first game I played that I was going to be the only non-human player in a game, I would have <laughs> laughed at you. You absolutely would have. And I was really, I was really between like human and not human, but I had so many good art thing options for for human, mm. for like noble esque. Oh, and you could just say they're you know not human, you know, like I don't Asimar or something or a shifter. True, but I kind of want the feet. So I feel like that maybe, would be cool. maybe I should ban Varian Human so everyone that actually plays the game. That might <laughs> no! not be unwise. You can't take this away from me. This is the first human I've ever played. I mean, Cole, Cole specifically locked me out of doing very Human when I made Richter, so. Well, no! because I already gave y'all a free feat. Exactly. And if we're getting a free feat anyway in all these games, what's the point? Like, there's no reason uh, to do a variant human or t custom origin. This is An obvious D&D campaign. Interesting idea. I mean, Brazil, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, if you give us a free feat, then I shall take it and do something else. If you do not, then I will play variant human. Yeah. But... But like we're we're gonna ban feats anyway, cause it, I I think this skill tree replaces it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! I forgot you did a skill tree thing. Mm -hmm. I haven't even looked at that shit. I've been running around all over the place. Oh, that's right. You have revised martial equipment. Should I actually be playing something that uses weapons? I mean, technically, we don't have any full spellcaster right now, but it, but you can play whatever you want. I'm a cleric. We have a cleric. I'm a cleric. Uh, Doesn't I, I, matter. I, yeah. mean, <laughs> I don't really count a forage cleric as a full caster, though. It's totally a full caster, though. I still have full spells. Yeah. Um, I'm planning on playing a full caster. Um, so I, I'm debating between like wizard and sorcerer. Oh. Yeah. Both could be good for this little party. I I don't have a sanctum. Moves? Alright, now I see why DMs ban Varian Human, the power of power gaming shoe hard. Mm -hmm. She's strong. <laughs> no! <laughs> I was the only one strong enough to resist. No, I've never played Varian Human. You're no. weak, Mickey. You no. are weak. <laughs> but, but, uh, Please, I, Massa. I, 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 that is... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, but, uh, you're saying. But I, I, I do like every other homebrew rule I added, except for he very human is okay yeah everything else i'm fine with that was like the one thing i was like hmm kind of scared like of the crunchy crits but we'll see how that goes i'm i'm excited for crunchy crits personally bro you're, I, you're... I at least want to try it bro you ain't gonna roll a crit <laughs> hey yeah. if it'll one be different this time old person Yeah, whole person is gonna be a little nutty with, with this. I do like the healing potion rule I added. 
Um, which one was that? It's the fourth one. Fourth. Oh yeah, that one. That's a good one. Uh, if you drink, you can drink your potion with either bonus action or action. If you do it with action, you heal for the max amount. With huh. bonus, you you roll. I like that. You should read the rules I posted, bro. I'm sorry, I've been busy all day. I've been busy the last several days. I'm struggling. I don't know if it was the intent. The I like the uh, scroll one a lot too, because that's kind of like um, old D and D and Pathfinder. That's how they do it. Yeah, that's kind of where I pull it from. It's kind of bullshit. Only castles get to scroll. It, it kind of. Man, what's the point? I don't get it. Man, I wish I had. I wish I had a rule like that in in my game. Yeah. That no one that people would use. I. I'm... <laughs> I think we only have like one scroll. We we haven't seen scrolls, and, and the ones we've seen are expensive as fuck. Ar Arlen <laughs> offered to make them. Oh, oh yeah, we should talk to Arlen. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> I think I I have oh, the too late now. You're gone. Oh well. Are we still streaming? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you, you should know by now, Mickey. I stream for far longer than I should. I know. I always forget, though. Oh, by the way, Ollie, you were still good for the um, Lost Mines, right? The what? Huh? The Lost Mines? <laughs> what, what's up? What's Lost Mines? Lost Lost Mines of Fandelver. Gold's gonna run it because there's there's someone I want to introduce to D and D. When are we gonna do that? Uh, soon, TM. Soon, TM. I, I have no memory of this game. Like look like legit one. Like legit, I, I have I'll, no memory I'll of it. In. I can bring in Scribble. You you totally could. Scribble, I'll fucking find my it. baby. I, 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 I don't. I, I think this is the first time I hear of this game. Scribble, you you scribble, definitely scribble. responded to it. I remember because you joked about it. Oh, it wasn't Fandelver specifically at the time. It was just intro game. That was it. That's what uh, I don't uh, remember. Uh, who's the person? Uh, she's in the server. She hasn't said anything. Uh, Takara 1997. Uh, I've been talking to her for a while. Oh, oh! Yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I that let, me, let me DM her. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, weren't we gonna? Does he even have a date in the game? Uh, no, not yet, Bruh. We need to get that figured out. That's 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 what I'm getting at. Indeed, indeed. Y'all better keep streaming. It's 4 a.m. and no one's up. I need the fresh voices. <laughs> Coco, go to sleep. Oh, her her, her bedtime. Oh my gosh, she's. Still Coco, I closed the stream anymore. I didn't think what you were in the stream anymore. Just start around. Uh, I'm down. I'm down to just kind of vibe and stream for a bit, honestly. Uh, I mean, Coco, if, if you if you want to see any, if you want me to play like Fantasy Star Online for you or, or some shit like that, not Fantasy Star Online, the, the other Fantasy Star, Fantasy Star Zero. She just said okay. I don't know if that's a, a, a yes or no or, or like. Sounds like an okay. Like I really want to play dark and darker, but I need a fucking team, and my guilty teammate is just 
just gone. Just, He's dead. <laughs> he just fucked his computer on the day of the beta. Like, I, I, I'm fucking <laughs> mad. Sad. <laughs> Damn. Coco, play D and D with us sometime. She is on break right now. She won't be next week though. Oh. Is she? Yeah, bro. Um, run the game this uh, Saturday. Prepare it right now. Fucking tomorrow. Or, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh. I don't know. Uh, oh, shit. You know what? I do have... Uh, I bought... I, I backed uh, these guys on Kickstarter a while ago. I think the vibes that... I think it's vibes that Coco and Mickey and Sleepy would be all over. <gasps> Is it Faye? It's Faye adjacent. Oh, um, that's close enough. It's, it's not specifically Faye. It's tiny woodland creatures. Oh, I love that! <laughs> Let me see if I can. There's one, there's a number of adventures. There's one in particular I wanted to run, which is like the as ironic as it sounds, like the horror campaign of this. Um, let me see if I can find the bro. If you want to do a day, let me know. Yes, I will let you know. Uh, you have. No, it's gonna have to be. I don't think I can get one ready by tomorrow. I can't really do tomorrow. I have a bunch of things that I need to do this weekend. I'll be able to make it to the Sunday one shot thing, but yeah. Saturday is kind of kind of pushing it. <laughs> That's fair. Uh another time then. Another time. Uh Okay, uh, I will read the introduction for this uh, campaign I wanted to do. And you guys tell me if this sounds interesting. Uh, Alright. Oh, actually, this is kind of long. Basically, a, uh, um, a bird uh, person flies through a storm and is shot down outside of a lighthouse... And the lady working the lighthouse goes to save him, and then spooky cultists working for a dark god come up wondering where he where he is. And she's scared for her life, and she sends letters saying, oh my god, please someone come help me. All, all cute little forest critters, by the way. I love them. Uh, and the dark god has the has a, I think one of the coolest names for a dark god, Amaranthine Crane. Yeah, I think that's cool. Anyway. Uh, it seems like a pretty short... It's probably not a one-shot. It's probably, like, a short adventure. But... But look at this art, though. Like, they're, uh... They're, 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 uh... They're fox people. Look at this shit. The, the evil cultists are foxes. Oh. Why are you posting this? Uh, Dungos. Dungos. Ah. Says Coco. I can play all my cute little critters. There's a lot of really cute art here. They're oh. excellent little evil cultists. Fucking uh, where here it is. Here's probably my favorite character in this book. Um, uh, Owl Pirate. <laughs> yes. Oh. Wonderful. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's a here's a character for y'all. Yeah! Hold on. Wait. Uh, let me see if I can find a more peoply looking animal. I can't actually get this whole image into one screen, so it's a little bit cropped. But look, look at, at that. this cutie.
Yeah, I've been wanting to run these adventures. I just haven't found a good time for it. But I think these are really cute. Aha, there's another one. Oh my god. And and look look at the cat. <clears throat> oh my god. <laughs> I think and I don't my know. Little if, lizard. I don't know if there's stats for animal races. Maybe it's in a Ollie different sent part. me this one and I love them. Oh my god. Are you posting this? Oh, that I found it. <laughs> kind of clear that this is made. This art was all by a bunch. Of, oh, I love this one. This one's cute too. Or even better, add to the cultists. Yes. Uh, here is a um, a rabbit outlaw. Oh. That's not a, or, no, that's a, a kind of rat that has a long tail. I don't remember what kind of rat it is. Uh, kangaroo mouse? Yeah, that might be it. I think that is it, yeah. Honestly, I would probably play like, like, like something like this. Fat <laughs> yeah, I love him. Yeah, there was something I found a little while ago. Gosh, where is it? Saved it because it seemed like something Coco or Mickey would play, or like have the character or both in her of us. game. Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> where is he? Where's this little? Where's this lovely little fellow? That's too far back. <gasps> yes, Coco. Oh, that's such a good movie. There he is. I found him. Oh, yeah, I'd used him as an NPC for sure. We don't need any secondary, like, healing things, do we, for the mini-campaign? Mark? What? Huh? Um, it wouldn't Do we need hurt, secondary, any healy related things? I mean, I'm only one guy, so... True. I only have so many spell slots. This is true.
Why the fuck am I muted? Hi, everyone. Oh, God, are you saying things? Kind of. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't remember why I muted myself. Dad, see oh, no, because Shelby's walking away. I was like, Shelby, come back. Oh. And I think we're up to just unmute. Nice. But she did come back. Adorable. Oh, my God, look at this art. This is so cute. Looking through my uh, my little critter book. Nope, not in not in that channel. It's wrong channel. The little hedgehog. Ah, wonderful. What a funny little fellow. <laughs> Coco, have you seen uh Fantastic Mr. Fox? This is giving me big fantastic Mr. Fox vibes. Oh. Washed together died. Oh. Did it? Did we go through all the music? I think it's just not wanting to play. Oh, it's something. it's on a Yeah. Oh, it's the Berserk music. Oh yeah, because that, that's copyright claimed. Damn. That's Damn. a shame. Hopefully it doesn't. You had a good run. Stream. Oh, well, I, 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 I did all. get an, I did get one archived stream copyright claimed. Really? I don't think I don't think it does anything for me. I think it's still up, but what uh? Do you know what song it was? It, it was the Berserk song. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, let me see how long the. It's called the Seahawk. Let me see how long this campaign is. Is it really? So it's three parts. I doesn't really say how long each adventure is. Each part is though. Seems fairly short. So the actual description of it is. Okay, actually, no, it might be a decent, be a decent chunk. I think it's manageable. Ah, oh, me. Okay, I'm reading. I'm reading through this. This campaign sounds awesome. We got to do this sometime. Yes, I want to. I, I they the, they have the art of the final boss and I can't show it because it's literally the final boss. But it's... <laughs> yeah, we're definitely doing this. I think after Lost Minds, I'll I'll start putting this up and if nothing else, get Coco in on it. Look at this dude. We got more, uh, more fucking fox cultists. It looks so cool. Foxes are awesome. They're just cool, dudes. I don't know what else to say. They're just cool. Thank you for the for the heart, Coco. I agree. I like him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That. Let me yes. see. Uh. Everyone has to play some sort of fuzzy critter. I love it. That is the idea, yes. Yes. Oh, what a horrid creature. Yes. 
Okay, so there's pre-made character sheets, but it's not showing me what the stats are for the races. I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard to find. It's not. Wait. It's probably in a, in a... It gave me a couple of books. It's probably in one of the other ones. I figured it'd all be in one book, though. You, there's new class options. Oh, they have subclasses. Oh. Uh, Druid Circle of the Warden. Every Druid has responsibility to the natural world, but those join Circle of the Warden stand as sentinels of nature's balance. Circle of the Warden Druid specialize in divination, abjuration, magic, help people possible. Okay, so like, uh, interesting. Uh, expertise in nature and insight. Proficiency is double. Yeah, that's what that does. Uh, learn location by concentrating on it. Oh my god, Coco, that's... I love that. <gasps> yes! He's so cute! Ah, More fucking evil animal shit. I love this. Yes, Ooh. he's so cool. Warlock pa so that this art is for Warlock Patron, the Predator. That's so cool. That's fucking rad. A little goofy one. Let's see if I have any crazy ones in Pinterest. There. Uh wizard, leyline magic. Okay. Cool. Um oh that's it. Okay, they only have three subclasses. Oh, here's Hex the Warlock pup. Oh, gosh. <laughs> or this little critter. I love him. Come on. Drag him over. I believe it. No. Copy. He's really cute, too. And I love my axolotls. Oh, my God. I love that. Oh, okay, so here's what uh, Predator Patron actually does. First level, use bonus action, channel ferocity and guile of your patron, transform me into a beastly figure. For 10 minutes, uh, you are flooded with adrenaline, uh, temporary HP, okay, uh, advantage on stealth, perception, and survival checks, uh, sprout a set of pointed teeth and claws for natural weapons, uh, can use charisma modifier for attack and damage rolls, if you already have a natural weapon, it said increases the the damage die on it. So if you already have like a D6 bite, it becomes a D8. Huh. Uh, okay. So it's a it's a transformation subclass, like Path of the Barbarian, Path of the Barbarian, Path of the Beast. Uh, okay. They heal by biting people. Uh, red. I feel like this was made for Frost, actually. Hey, Frost, you want to transform into a into a deer warlock? Yes. Use your charisma to always miss. Okay, so Leyline Wizard, uh, whenever you, okay, so whenever you rest, you can choose, you have like a set of spells based on different, uh, um, biomes. That's like you, cool. and you can choose a list of spells that you learn every day. Hmm. Like if you're Arctic, you get Grease for some reason, Hold Person, Slow, Ice Storm, Kind of Cold. Uh, Grassland gets Elevated Sight, which makes you a new spell. Gust of Wind, Wind Wall, Freedom Movement. Interesting. So none of these seem like super out there, but kind of neat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, these rules are cool, right, Mark? No. Oh, um. Let's see. 
Oh, I love the smoking frog cocoa. Okay, I gotta take the dogs out before they shit in the house. Be right back. I like point three a lot. That's really good. Okay, sure. Yeah, I like these. Uh, only thing, uh, the doing bonus actions is an action. Uh, does that give you just another bonus action? No, nope. you, you're, you're just using, you're just replacing your, you're just using it, really. <laughs> hmm, okay. I don't know how it would come in handy, but I feel like having, having that restriction doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really add up. Like Maybe if you want a second win as a as an action because you action search for it, uh, then you can. Oh, is second win even a bonus action? I don't even know. Bro. Uh, it is, yeah. Yeah, these seem pretty good though. All right, end stream right now. I'm so tired. Ah! I'm sorry, Cole. Doesn't that encourage you to end it sooner? Yes. It sucks to suck, Cole. <laughs>